Hello, and welcome to Gabbit Media. Hopefully you can hear me, let me know. I saw a few comments about my choice of music. <laughs> I thought it would be sort of uh, fantasy music and be sort of get people in the mood, but Red Elixir is not happy about it. <laughs> I'm going to punch that music. <laughs> uh, do let me know whether you can hear me. Uh, hopefully you can. Hello, Urban Sunny Ray, Red Elixir, uh, Minato 200, Pop Bro. Sir Wolf, Blender Tutorials and Art, <laughs> Mujib, Corey S. Uh, it's uh, nice to nice to see you all on here. Yes, fantasy indeed, Irwin Sunny Ray. That's what I was going for, the fantasy theme. It wasn't the best choice, but I was sort of rushing around. I left it at the last minute. Okay, so if you don't know already, we are um, doing some of this stuff, low poly acts today. So nice and simple, hopefully, um, but I'm, showing, I'm gonna show ways of doing it uh, the quickest way probably, uh, and uh, a bit of texturing. So it just be nice, chilled, laid back, having some fun as always. <laughs> Shama Khan straight in there with the questions. I'll answer that in a second. So if you could sort of copy and paste that and bring it back in about four minutes and then I'll answer some questions and we'll, uh, we'll get going. But what I want you to start off doing whilst I'm chatting away is maybe find a reference image if you want to follow along with a reference image. So have a look at some axes. I did have some earlier. Oh, I forgot about them. Uh, where are they? Ah, uh, oh, I've got to load up my PureRef again. Uh, right, load recent axes. So I had a few there, um, but I didn't really use any of them. I suppose it's a bit like this, a bit like this. So you might want something in the background. I was thinking that maybe if it ha if it's, ooh, my screen going funny there. If it, um, uh, two hours is usually the stream length, roughly. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so maybe if we sort of get uh, and finish early, <laughs> if we finish early, if you do your homework <laughs> early, um, I might turn it into a sculpting session uh, because it's quite easy to do that. You can just sort of join it all together and start sculpting. Um, and maybe we can go a bit more, I don't know, like this sort of style. It'd be quite fun. Uh, but uh, if you're a beginner, then um, you're going to be working towards this sort of level. Which is, it looks quite nice, doesn't it? Low poly has that sort of charm. Uh, yeah, look at that, lovely stuff, eh? Okay, so if you want to find a reference image, look for a reference image. Um, do you know, I haven't gotten that reference image myself. Um, I have to be a bit more careful because I can't just plonk any image up. I, they have to be sort of copyright free, unless I'm sort of showing my pure ref. I think that's okay uh, because that sort of, um, I could be viewing it on the internet. But if I'm using the image as a background piece, I think that's getting a bit more tricky, isn't it? So I'm just gonna type in, X, and then I'm going to go image search. I suppose I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, in case you ever need to, <laughs> obviously under Google, you've got um, some tools here and you can have usage rights labeled for reuse and mod uh, modification. It, I know these are sort of obvious things, but um, I always tell my students this because if you're looking for non-copyright images to use, I don't know, if you have a YouTube channel, for example, <laughs> then this is great. So um, I'll have this as an example uh, just for now. So I'll download that. Save image as. I'll bring that over there. Uh, right. Okay. Um, so whilst you're looking for background images, I will talk through a few things, answer a few questions, and all that sort of stuff. So, oh, and also there's the Discord as well. Make sure you join the Discord. There we are. Um, I need to go to the live stream channel. I think. Oh, I'm in it already in it. I'm already in it. I was well prepared for this. So, um, angry noise. Not sure why. Uh, there we go. So, hello to people. It's uh, nine, it's just nine for me. It's not morning, afternoon, it's just nine. Oh, good morning. Good morning, folks. <laughs> anyway, so uh, post your work in there. Maybe some inspirational images images to start us off. And so we can all sort of, oh, look at that cool axe. I want one like that, please. Uh, can someone send me the link for the ice cream, the live stream? It's, it's up there. It's, oh, well, um, someone post it's up there for them. Because <laughs> they can't obviously see me saying it's up there because I am the live stream. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so a few questions then. Uh, the first one was, I have a question, why we need, look at my face there. It's, uh, it's sort of looking at me. <laughs> so I can help myself. Uh, uh, why we need retopology for character? Uh, because if you've sculpted it, you've got so many faces on it, as in it's really high poly as we call it. Uh, so you, you can't put that into a game engine. In fact, it takes a long time to render when it's high faces. And if you want to put any textures onto that, it's really difficult to texture high poly stuff. So we re to lower the face count. Hopefully that answers your question. 
How long will you stream? About two hours. So we'll finish about five. Uh, you need it if you can. Oh, yeah, you've answered that question. It's amazing, not amzing. <laughs> um, explain, uh, explain potato. I don't quite know what it is. Well, uh, have you not heard the expression? Uh, it, my computer's a potato. Uh, if you've got a bad computer, you call it potato and uh, just uh, search potato on the internet if you don't have access to potatoes. We have lots of them in England. I don't know, you must, uh, the, I'm assuming, I'm thinking potato is fairly universal as a, as a uh, vegetable. Is it a vegetable? No, it's a root vegetable, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've got some sort of hair there, sorry, distracting me. Anyway, where were we? Um, yeah, so. Uh, so I've, uh, if you haven't seen already, I think it's quite an interesting point for discussion. Uh, so if you haven't seen it already, uh, I think about 1.30 I posted a video saying, if you've got a computer, like a potato, then don't worry, you can actually uh, go online and use a computer online. There we go, look at that. Oh, that's a potato PC. So if you've got that as your PC, or it's the upgrade version, which looks a bit more like a computer. <laughs> I love this. Where did you find that, Yeti? <laughs> Oh, well, it's going to be triple now. <laughs> Stop it. Stop messing around. Uh, we've got work to do. We've got low poly access to make. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, Vagon. Um, it, so, um, yeah, they contacted me recently. Let me have a go with their servers. It was quite fun, actually. It was pretty cool. So uh, you just log in. I mean, obviously, it costs money. But the, if you follow the link in the video that I made, uh, you get a free access. Um, I think they might be a bit inundated since the video, <laughs> but you get some some free access uh, for an hour's worth of thing. It's like one dollar twenty nine for an hour. I people are saying that's expensive, but that that seems alright to me um, for the power that you're getting. And you, if you're let's say you've got a Chromebook for example, and you want to do Blender stuff, uh, then you log on to this and you use their computer. So you're like a what what do they call it skeleton version. They, there's a name for it, isn't there? You're a skeleton computer, and they've got the power behind it. Oh. That's not the right term, is it? Someone tell me what the right term is. Anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, Vagon, uh, check them out because uh, I think that I think it's the future of computing. I really do. Um, uh, and I had a go, and it was pretty seamless. I was doing some sculpting and stuff using their processor and their graphics card to render, and all that was cool. Uh, Lunar Lotus, that's too fast. Uh, so that's a minus star to you. Uh, minus minus Gabbit coin, way too quick. <laughs> that's really nice though. I like that. Um, oh, actually, is this um, is that a reference image or is that I thought that was your own for a moment, but or is is that a reference image? Sorry, Lunar Lotus. You can have a positive. You can have a gold star for that. A Gabbit gold star, gold coin from Gabbit. <laughs> right, back to work. Back to work. Um, a few more questions whilst we're waiting. Oh, nice. That looks good. Uh, it's a bit I'm not sure how to pronounce it. <laughs> Love it. There we go. We're getting some axes in now. That's quite cool on that one, isn't it? Uh, just checking my face isn't in the way. Oh, looking good. Uh, low poly Viking character, maybe at some point. Um, I was the reference. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, it was uh, Grant. Uh, yeah, sorry. Was the ref was reference? Yeah, Loon Lotus. Sorry, I'm being an idiot. Being an idiot. Don't worry about me. Okay, let's. Um, so I've explained potato and I've talked about Vagon, uh, so I've given them a, a bit of a shout out because that was pretty cool. Like, I, I I honestly think it is the future. I really do. Oh, there's someone giving me a some donation. That's very nice, but my sound isn't coming through. Um, a donation, that's lovely. Uh, game over, thank you very much. I'm not sure why my alerts aren't working. Oh, huh. should be. Sorry about that. I should have an alert box. I'll look out, but I'll say thanks. So game over, thank you very much for the donation. Much appreciated. Um, I'd ask you a question, but you said to shave it for later. Oh, this is bad stuff. <laughs> nice work, Red Alexa. <laughs> Uh, right, so I'm just going through the questions and then I will get on with some cool work. So, um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's some Uni Udemy courses. I've put some links in the description because that's what I want to talk about as well. Uh, I've uh, got a character course. I've been working with the game dev TV people. I'm going to get some, uh, get an image up actually, if I can find it. Oh, it's going to take me a second to find my image. But um, I'm quite proud of this because I put a lot of time into this. <laughs> Very proud of myself, uh, but yeah. So I've been working very hard making a character course, and uh, it, working with, like I say, the game dev TV people to produce this course. And what I, what really impressed me about them um, is that um, they've got quite a community, and they have uh, what are they called? Um, 
people that help you out basically. So if you're stuck on something, you can you can join their community and ask questions, and people will get back to you. They're they're trying uh, to have a, a never be stuck sort of um, I don't know catchphrase. <laughs> never get stuck. Uh, so there's always someone to ask. I mean that is the future of courses. I talk about the future of com um, computers with Vagon, but that's the future of courses. Never get stuck. So as soon as you get stuck, you go on the online and ask someone about it. So that I think is cool. And that's why I agreed to join them because I, I hate the thought of someone buying my course and then giving up halfway through because they got stuck somewhere. Anyway, uh, resources. That's not it. Where the heck is it? Uh, oh, what have I done with it then? Oh, what have I done with them all? I just thought it was, oh no, I've lost it. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. I was going to show you my image of the course, um, but hmm, that's strange. I've just lost my, oh, that's very annoying. <laughs> Maybe I can go get it. Oh, I, I can find a way to get to it. I'm going to find a way. <laughs> I've got to do it. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll show you another time. Uh, the link to it <laughs> is in the description. I want to show it, actually. I want to show it. Uh, that's annoying uh, because this is my big chance to say, look, my course, and I can't find the image for it. I must have downloaded it somewhere. Uh, it must be in my thumbnail somewhere. Yeah, oh, I'll get to it in a second. I'll answer some more questions in a second. I do want to find this, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I am gonna find it. Hold on one second. One second, one second. I'm going to get there. Why is everything going wrong? There's always something that goes wrong with my live streams. Okay, we're getting some images of axes in the background for me. That's a good That's a good axe, that is. I don't know how it works, though, with you chopping the wood, but, yep, I like it. Ooh, um, that's a sort of medieval sort of looking cool thing. Hey, nice. Already set up the reference images, eh? Oh, that looks good. <laughs> cool axe there, like it. Okay, get some more reference images. Excellent stuff, excellent. And uh, why is nothing working for me at the moment? My schedule. Ah, right, right. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Come on. Oh, what is happening here? I'm trying to find the course and the um, resources and images. Oh. <laughs> Why can I not get to it? Yeah, oh, I'm going to give up on that. Anyway, my new course on making a, a cool character. I'll show it to you at the end anyway, because we need to get on and make some cool stuff. Right. Let's get back to the live stream. Uh, we face a super cyclone in Bangladesh. That's a nightmare, isn't it? I did see that on the news, and ah, oh, uh, my um, heart went out to all the refugees uh, who were ah, oh, um, yeah, that's that's tough going. So um, really sorry to hear that. Uh, thank you very much, Spark, for the donation. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, ah, little Su uh, little Susu. Uh, thank you, Spark, for reminding me. I completely forgot. Uh, so uh, shout out to little Susu, uh, who's uh, working through uh, the live streams and tutorials as we speak. Is that right, uh, Spark? Let me know uh, how. Uh, let me know, little Susu, how you're getting on. <laughs> cool stuff. Uh, also, Sa Sam Khan, you're um, you're a member of Game Dev, and they're very helpful. There we go. You see, that's why I wanted to join them. Right. Um, <laughs> seeing Bracky's Discord on the screen, yep. I mean, these are all the Discords that I joined. There's the Game Dev TV Discord. I was doing a, a, a live chat with them the other day. It was quite fun. Uh, anyway, uh, Spark, eight years old. <laughs> oh, cool stuff. Uh, so, yeah, um, uh, how, are you, how are you getting on so far, uh, Susu? I hope you're doing well with, uh, with, with the work. Have you found a reference image of an axe that you can do? <laughs> if you want to do axes? Okay, well, hang on. What's going on here? People are just shooting ahead. Blaze, blaze. <laughs> Too quick for me. Okay, uh, so bringing reference images into Blender is fairly straightforward. We'll, we'll start. Ready to start? Everybody ready to start? Get your game face on. Uh, let's go. Right, so I'm going to start a new file. Do I need to save this? Have I changed it? I'll save it just in case. File, new. And general, this is what you should see. So I'm, oh, I'm in 2.82. I'm using 2.83, but 2.82 is fine. Um, just having a quick look at the chat, making sure nothing's going wrong. Um, oh yeah, I should say, um, the link in the description to my course is a special discount price, and it's $12 at the moment. I think that is an absolute steal. I've got to say, <laughs> an absolute steal. Anyway. 
uh, more less about that. I don't want to do the sale because I'm not a salesperson. That's not what I do. Uh, but um, I can tell you that's a steal. <laughs> Go get your course for $12. So there's a coupon to get the course. That, I put some other game dev TV courses if you're interested. If you follow the links, then I uh, get some affiliate sort of um, revenue and stuff, but it doesn't cost you any more. So it, you'll be supporting me if you buy, if you follow through those links, if that makes sense. So the cool thing is with reference images in 2.8 um, and onwards, you can grab your reference image. So I've got it in downloads and you can grab and drag it in like this. Ta-da, isn't that great? Now, if you have a problem doing that, it could mean that you're in edit mode. So if you can't drag it in, it's because you cannot drag it in whilst in edit mode. Best salesman ever. Yes, thank you very much, Vito uh, Levin Mill. <laughs> Is there a reference photo? You know, you need to find your own reference photo, okay? Um, museum of Broken Relationship. Is that what it said? Museum of Broken Relationship. <laughs> Is that what the image is called? Uh, yes, it is. I chose the axe of broken relationships. Well, that's a cool name for an axe. <laughs> so I'm going to call my model the axe of broken relationships. <laughs> um, I'm looking for a graphics tablet uh, that will last for a long time. Probably Wacom, Hueyon. Uh, they seem to be quite robust. But Wacom, the, the one by Wacom is the one I would recommend. The one I would recommend. Oh, how about that? Okay, so we've got our axe in. So if you want to follow on with the reference image, the only thing is when you bring a mod, um, when you bring, when you drag a reference image in like this, uh, it goes at a weird angle. You just mean, need to press, I uh, will, in fact, what do you press? What do you press? I'm going to get my screencast keys up in the corner there. Uh, and what do I need to press to uh, sort my reference images out so it's directly in line? What do I press to remove ro rotation, I should say? Okay. Do I need a reference image? You do not need a reference image. It's just in case you want one. That's a sad name for an axe, indeed. I would axe myself on that name if I were you. Oh, oh dear. Red elixir. That will do. That will do. <laughs> Alt R and Alt G. Oh, yes. A TD Studios were there first. You get the Gabbit Gold Star. Actually, gold coins. The gold coins. Where did the gold star come from? I don't know. Uh, yeah, Wacom in Chios is a good brand, but the the one by Wacom is the cheapest one they do, and I and, and it's really good still. Um, it just you just don't have loads of buttons down the side, which I think get in the way anyway. God, there's loads of people on. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 gee, they shouted at me. Stop it! Stop it! Uh, okay, so um, if I press Alt R, you'll see that it removes the rotation. Alt G will remove any grabbing, any grabbing around here. Uh, so uh, you can then put it into position by RX90. So I'm typing in RX90 if you're a beginner and new to this and it will be right in line. And then you can use your numpad for one to go to front view and then you can copy it. I won't be copying it quite because I don't like the shape of this one. And I, I don't want to use a reference image. I'm going to use my imagination. I better get my pure ref um, ideas up though. It's good to have something in the background in case you're going off on one. So even if you're uh, you've got this great idea, but have reference images that look, you just quickly glance at it and you think, oh, actually their blades are much smaller than mine, you know, that sort of thing. So it's always a good idea to have reference images like this. I mean, it's not many reference images. I'd have usually have a lot more than this. Anyway, I'm going to bring this down out of the way. I want to bring it out of the way. I'm on the wrong screen, actually. I usually choose this screen, so I'm on my Wacom in case I do some sculpting, but we can change that later. Um, thanks as always for your service to Blender and 3D. I've been working on your exercises finally. Good stuff, Gredran. Gredran. Cool. A gold cube. Oh, that's good, Polygon Studio. Polyguy Studios. Studio. <laughs> I'll get it right in a second. G a Gabbit Gold Cube. I think I think we're onto something here. Uh, you can get some. Uh, <laughs> you can have an affiliate link to the Gabbit Gold Cube. <laughs> Don't cut me off. Oh, Red Alexia. Oh, no. It's happening. Uh, why can't I see my image in solid mode? Do you mean your background image, your reference image? I'm in solid mode and I can see it. You should be able to see it in whatever mode, actually, I think, apart from rendered mode because the overlays have to be on. Maybe the overlays are off. Perhaps that's what it is. Not sure. Tom Kayak, not sure about that one. Sorry. Um, uh, will your bi Discord be on Udemy too? Uh, not sure what you mean, game over. I press it for it. Yeah. Anyway, back to the kit. I suppose we do need the Discord back up to see what how people are getting on. Oh, look, there's a great reference image there. So we've got some good reference image, good stuff. 
<laughs> Minato 200. I think we can see that as a cool axe. That is, that is a bit of an axe, isn't it? It's quite funny, actually. I like it. <laughs> no. Van, that's it. No. Oh, give it an axe. An axe icon. <laughs> this is cool. I like this. Very nice. Very nice. Like that. By Susu. It's really. Wow, that was quick. And pretty awesome as well. So how old um, are you, Susu? Uh, did I say that earlier? My brain's going. Did you say eight years old? I can't remember now. Uh, because that just seems absolutely mega awesome. I've lost it now. There it is. <laughs> Very nice. Um, uh, see a Think Art TV. Just having a look through. Okay, so we've got some reference images. People have started on their X's already. <laughs> Ah, the course. My course will be on Udemy eventually. Yes, yes. Sorry, I see. Um, that's weird. It looked like Discord. I, maybe I just got. Um, here's the reference. That I'm not. I'm not going to use that reference. It's just. Uh, it's a free uh, image that reference um, that I could use in the background. But I'm. I'm going to use my own, uh, which is all up here. Okay, so um, you're using Blender one point seven nine. You mean 2.79, don't you? Uh, a graphics card error. Try Vagon, I'll tell you. <laughs> it could be a, it could be a worth, uh, worth a go if you're having trouble using Blender uh, on uh, 2.8. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, um, some if you haven't got a good graphics card, Blender 2.8 will struggle, unfortunately. Anyway, let's get on. Right, so I'm actually gonna remove the background image for now because I'm not going to use it. And I'm gonna remove, remove the default cube. Can you hear that? A million cubes dying. Shift A, uh, mesh plane. I know I'm gonna start with a plane. I know, seems, what the, what's that crazy fool doing? <laughs> He's gonna start with a plane. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna uh, rotate around the Y 90 degrees because I like to have my mirror across the X axis. That's the usual way of doing it. So I'll actually be working from side view of the X. So the X will be sort of this way. Make sense? Ooh, axis. Did you already start? Yeah, we've, we've just about started. I'm literally about to start my axe. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so start with a plane. Uh, I think a plane is easier to work with. So I'm gonna go to side view with three on my numpad, and then I'm gonna draw my axe. Now, you might wanna make your axe actual size. So actual size, let's press N on the keyboard and go to item. Here's the actual scale, and it's two meters for this bit. So I'm gonna make this bit about this big, which is about three, maybe four centimeters big. Okay, so I'm gonna scale this down until it's around four centimeters. So that's 13 and a half centimeters. So let's zoom in on that. Scale it down to about four centimeters, somewhere, well, five centimeters, there we go, about there. So we've actually got the right dimensions for our ax now, and that could make a difference if you're taking it into another program, possibly. The pin message is still there. Hey, I'll get rid of that, actually. We don't need that anymore. Oi, it's not working. Oh, why is it dying? I can't get rid of it. That's a bit weird. Ah, no, it's just being really odd. I can't see it. It's being really laggy. It's not letting me l click on it. It's, my stream isn't going laggy or anything, is it? I'm just gonna leave it there because it, it just won't let me click on it. It's being a real pain. Uh, anyway. Uh, you can scale it in edit mode, yes, that's that's fine if you want to do that because what I have to do now, I have to press Control A because we've got a scale of minus 0 0.025 uh, to get this, uh, these are the actual dimensions but the scale is all off and it's best to have that one for other things like unwrapping for example, so I'm going to press Control A and s apply, Control A and apply my scale, okay? So now these are all set to one. That's really helpful if you go into sculpt mode or anything like that and things won't be out. Like when you remesh in sculpt mode, it takes into account this scale. Actually, does it? Yes, it does, as well as the dimensions, yeah. Um, so I would apply um, the scale, yes, indeed, pop bros. Is it bro? Is it pop bro? Uh, but it looks like pop bros when I read it. <laughs> uh, was I right in saying Susu is eight years old? Um, uh, Spark, let me know. Uh, because that's really cool. Hey, this is cool. Did this one uh, before a few, one before a few weeks. Uh, but topology suck, as you can see. Well, not necessarily. Well, you sort of can just about tell. But we'll we'll work on that today. 
How do you rotate the camera with digital tablet while sculpting? Uh, you want to uh, set your middle uh, sculpting bu button, middle sculpting button, that's a pen button, to uh, your mouse, your pen button, you want to set that to middle click and then you can just press that whilst moving around. It's much easier. Uh, you can also do emulate numpad, but it's the worst way of doing it. Okay, so I've got my plane here, inside view. I'm going to go to edit mode, and I'm going to go to edge mode. Can you hear the birds outside? So I've opened my window to let a bit of air in, so I might have to suddenly close it if it gets noisy or anything. But can you hear the birds? It's, uh, this in the tree we've just chopped down with our axe. <laughs> They've lost their home. It's a bit morbid, isn't it? Um, where are we? Just having a look, make sure everybody's happy. Okay, so I'm going to make an axe. Now I can press E to extrude and pull this out. E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale, and we can just sort of make an axe hilt. Okay? You can hear the bird. Hey. <laughs> it adds to the mood, doesn't it? We found we're in a, a forest, aren't we? It's cool, isn't it? Uh, we might it might not add to the mood if my neighbours start chatting and stuff. <laughs> in the woods, making an axe. <laughs> It's quite relaxing. Hopefully uh, Red Alexia is all right with bird noises because they didn't like my music earlier. Uh, the fake animated bird sounds are nice. I'm actually in a really gloomy, dark basement. <laughs> Adopt those birds. They're nice birds actually, aren't they? We've got pigeons out there as well and they eat all my... Because I've been uh, doing a touch of gardening, not much in the last few days, but I've been trying to grow my own veg. So, and the pigeons get, and they come and nick your stuff, don't they? Yeah, pigeons. Anyway, what you can do, instead of pressing E to extrude, and then S to scale. You can press Control and sort of do Control right click. Sorry, I should have said that. Control right click will do an extrude for you, and we can sort of do. I don't know. Is that the right shape? Is that a good shape to have? I, I should have put my previous one up here because I quite like the shape of that. I'm not sure I like that actually. I feel like it needs to come out this way. So I'll go this way. Oh, that's too much. Should I make them fairly even? I would say. I think that will help you. Something like that, I reckon. Something like that. Is that an axe hilt? I mean, you can obviously um, edit them and stuff. I was watching tutorials, and instead of going to the next one in playlist, it brought me here. Yeah, weird. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's quite weird, isn't it? Uh, birds are okay, are they, Reddit? Alexa, you're right with them. <laughs> uh, why does your course say the instructor is Rick Davidson? That's interesting. Uh, he, he's a joint instructor with me. Uh, so he's done the sort of beginning sections, which is, in case you're a complete beginner to Blender, uh, because it's a bit of a struggle if you're a complete beginner and you haven't done any of the interface, Rick's done the sort of first section. And he also um, does sort of intro bits with me and uh, acts like a student and asks me questions, which I think is quite useful. Tomahawk, oh yeah, Tomahawk. Is that what I'm going for? I think that is what I'm going for. Uh, I want to adapt it a little bit. So now's the time to go in and sort of adapt your shape slightly and sort of uh, take a look and think how you want it. Now I've found that this is actually quite nice to do in sculpt mode, which is weird. Stay in side view. Don't bother going to the sculpting panel, but just go to sculpt mode here, uh, sculpt mode here and go to the grab brush, which is down here. And then you can just pull them in and sort of just adjust it how you see fit. I think this is quite a cool way of doing it. Personally, I think that's works for me. I'm just using my mouse. I'm not using my pen or anything. Maybe I'll bring this down a little bit as well. So, and then it sort of comes out this way a little bit. That, my brush is a bit big, so. That's weird. Why is it? A, oh, it's because I've got um, turn symmetry off. <laughs> I think what's going on. Why is that happening? There we go. And I'm getting a, more of a shape that I like, actually. Uh, I'm thinking this needs to come out a little bit like this. And then just, um, and spend a fair bit of time on this, getting your shape right, because it's a pain going back to this later, I'll tell you. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I don't know what, I'm gone all common tongue-ish. <laughs> what am I saying? Uh, is that a nice hilt? I think that's a bit better, isn't it? The axe going to, I mean, we can change it a bit in a second when we get the axe head in there, but I think this um, uh, is the best way. Uh, the price uh, is going up, yeah, yeah. Um, it, I think that it's highly likely there will be other discounts. I think um, uh, game dev uh, do sort of discounts every now and again. Uh, uh, so uh, don't panic about that price, but that is the official uh, price of the course, which 
it's still a steal. <laughs> but at twelve dollars, that's an absolute. When they told me the price of the course, I thought, whoa, man, <laughs> that's a steal. That is. But I think that because they managed to sell quite a lot, uh, then it makes sense, doesn't it? More people can uh, get hold of it, but you still make a reasonable amount of money for uh, the effort that you put in. So um, yeah. So generally speaking, I think they'd try and uh, aim with all sort of discounts and things like that. Um, uh, to not go below that sort of price. Am I uh, making sense? This is my this is my new course. I've made a character course. It's really cool. I'm going to find the image for that in a second. Uh, what do you use to stream Blender? Uh, streaming progress. Well, um, I'm using Streamlabs. Streamlabs, it's called, uh, and obviously YouTube. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, I've done a character course. I've made a character course. Uh, the links are in the description. Uh, so. I really want to show my image, but I can't find my image of the course. That's the one thing I really should have got ready. I am actually going to spend a bit of time now and find that whilst you're working on your acts uh, and uh, following the reference images, uh, I'm going to find that because it's annoying me. I need to find it. What have I done with it? And why is it being a pain? Right, let's find... Right, there's my Google stuff. Yeah, I'm doing this on a different screen, so you won't see what I'm talking about. Uh, right, I need to go to Google Drive, don't I? And where's my slides? Now, why are my slides not coming up? Oh, right. right I think uh, I think I found something that will work for the course, I think. Right, come on. There we go. Right. Uh, it's annoyingly, I can't find the actual image, but here we go. Here we go. So uh, here's the... the front piece front page of the course uh, we are we're not actually making this particular character but it's it will end up looking similar uh, because we're going up for a, a slightly simpler one but I use this as my example a lot there's Rick the other instructor you see and there's me if you hadn't didn't recognize me on there just there <laughs> okay so um, it, the course itself is um, we go through uh, it's a sculpting workflow but you don't have to be an artist to do it when trying to work in the simplest way possible that even if you're not an artist, you can come up with something that's similar to this. Um, and all the time we're using things like stencils and stuff to try and make the whole thing easier. And then there's sort of blocking out, sculpting, retopology, um, baking, texture painting, and also the whole workflow for making AAA game assets. The thing is what I try and do, and that's what I'm very proud of this because I'm trying to make this really beginner friendly. So anybody should be able to come across this and uh, if they've got the oomph, that is, uh, because it, it, it's a long course, um, but you should be able to go from zero to hero sort of thing in a short amount of time. That's, the, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, and uh, in the simplest way, so that where we can, we automate things like the remesh, for example. Um, and I show the proper retopology, but remesh is like the quick and easy way, and you can still get okay results. Um, so the things like that I put in. And we even uh, were hoping to get this into Unity as well um, through simple things like Mixamo uh, animations and stuff like that and Rigif using Rigify. So it's the whole process of going from zero to a Unity character that looks almost as cool as this. Almost. Yeah, I'd say it is actually. It's just different from this. It's a different sort of orc. Um, I'll see if I can find an image of that later on as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I feel like I've, I've lost, I'm not looking at the chat. So hopefully that's um, brought it all up. Just enrolled. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Make sure you use my link, then I get uh, uh, some affiliate money as well. Isn't that great? <laughs> it doesn't make any difference to your price. And if you want some other good courses, there's the Game Dev TV courses that run there as well. They're cool. And if you haven't got a computer that can run it, then get along to Vagon. <laughs> uh, shout out to everybody at the moment. Uh, yeah, Game Dev TV, they, I, I'm really impressed with them uh, because uh, I, I think I do okay tutorials, but when I chatted to them they had some good ideas they also watched through um uh my stuff to um to see whether it's uh whether people might get confused and they got sort of uh people who just try the course out uh who uh you know all that sort of stuff so it's really helpful and if there's you know a little mistake in there i can quickly go in and fix it and working with someone else you just get all those added bonuses and also um I haven't got the pressure of YouTube, so I can go that bit more in depth because you're always pressured on YouTube to try and get a good number of views. So you try and keep things simple, if I'm honest. Hey, cool. Thanks, Greg, Jack Gaming. Uh, so Polyguy Studios. So uh, is the price really going up to $195 at the end of the week? Uh, well, yes, you have to use the coupon code. Uh, but like I say, there'll be, uh, there'll be opportunities in there. I don't think there's the course has been fully re released. It's going to be re released on Udemy eventually and stuff. And there will be sales 
uh, here and there but uh, that's the official price of the course um, yeah uh, <laughs> when you first learn 3d how long you practice in a day it was on and off I, I've I've been doing it for like 20 years but it's on and off very much so anyway uh, let's go to the discord and see how people check out how people are getting on uh, cartoon star nice hmm, interesting are these looking cool I like it I like it there's a bit of text painting on there that's, that's good work as Zachariah uh, and I think we've seen those haven't we so I just scroll up and scroll down looking good uh, Merculum 83 excellent stuff so um, yeah lots of people go for the cylinder approach I find though that um, using a plane is better because cylinders the topology is really awkward with it and if you're choosing a cylinder to start with you'd think that for the handle wouldn't you but actually um, if you are choosing a cylinder go really low poly on the cylinder because you can always up the polygon count later but bringing it down is a pain uh, thank you for all your videos. It's really helpful, motivating, and relaxing. You are amazing. Also, I live in Russia, so people will watch you from all over the world. That's cool, isn't it? I love the fact that people watch me from all over the world. Let's get back to this anyway. Uh, so, I've got my axe uh, shape, which I'm happy with. Uh, let's go back to modeling now. No, what am I doing? Let's go back to object mode and uh, let's put in the next bit. So, uh, for the next bit, rather than um, shift rather than shift a mesh plane so I've added a new plane as you can see uh, here uh, there because I'm side view you can't see it if I rotate around the uh, Z axis 90 degrees it's there and I need to scale it down and I need to scale it down loads and put it into position but actually uh, and then I'd need to set the scale as well uh, but uh, 14 pound is that right uh, I mean if you follow the link that's the cheapest that it uh, is at the moment and that's blooming cheap cheap isn't it for a character of course that's that cool and you make cool orcs anyway <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm getting distracted I need to get back to the task at hand uh, <laughs> uh, so shift D I can re um, produce another sh face and I can then uh, just press P to separate by selection so P to separate so I just grab one of these faces shift D and then P to separate and it becomes a new object and then I can go back to object mode and into that new object uh, with um, just by left clicking. I think that's a lot quicker and, a, and you get the right size in a quick and easy way. Uh, I was wondering how be your student there. Hello Grant, I'm doing now the course of game dev and you saw you are instructor there. Um, which course are you doing though? Because I, I've only done the character course. I don't really do much of the Udemy, um, Udemy, uh, Unity stuff. Uh, so uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, so uh, let's move this into position. I think going to edge mode is the easiest way. So edge mode up here, of course, and then G to grab, pulling it into position, and probably, I mean, maybe reference image is a good idea here. Let's E to extrude that bit out. E to extrude that. And the tomahawk style. You sort of bring that this down, E to extrude this out, and it sort of comes down this way, yeah? Isn't it better to do Alt-D for the memory? Yeah, so I'm altering the shape, so I'm not doing, yeah, it's a, a different, um, Alt-D is instancing, um, for those that don't know, uh, but it wouldn't work in this case, because anything I changed on the original would, um, would change, would update. Uh, okay, so I'm just sort of uh, having a look at some axes down here, and what my style is going to be. So that's going to scale in a bit and come down there. Do I want another one? Oh, I pressed E to extrude instead of scale. So I'm just sort of getting a shape now. E to extrude and grabbing and pulling them about. I might have a loop cut around and across here eventually. But for now, just pulling it into place until I'm happy. Actually, maybe that comes down like this. Just having a look at what the other ones are doing. That's actually fairly flat on the Tomahawk ones. It's, it varies so much actually. I'm looking at them all actually. That most of them are going upwards actually. So I probably want to come upwards this way. I think that might look a bit better. And I'm just pulling things around. But notice how the shape's really simple at the moment. I'm just looking at it flat on, and we'll extrude it later on. But this, doing it like this, is much easier to edit your shape. And again, you could go into sculpt mode and just sort of start pulling things around into position like this uh, until you're happy. I think maybe coming out here a bit more. And then it's just a bit more like drawing and it's sort of a bit easier, in my opinion. And I, I like to do low poly work uh, in this style. In fact, I like to do a lot of 
hard surface modeling in this sort of style. Right, so that's sort of X shaped, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so uh, using uh, this sort of flat modeling idea, I think is the best approach. Uh, if you've got a question, if you at Grant, um, at Grant Abbott, uh, A-B-B-I-T-T, uh, then it's much easier for me to see because there's quite a lot of chat going on uh, and difficult for me to keep up with it all. Hopefully you're keeping up. Let's have a look at the Discord again. Oh, what have we got going on here? Uh, so you use grease pencil and then use that as the background. That's a nice idea. It's looking good. I like this. I like the straps going around. Nice work. Um, so that's a kiss, kiss bow. A black hole 702 looking cool then we've got dressy fiddle doing a nice piece there can't quite tell what's going on there always trying to follow along with the stream nice work minotto 200 cool keep working guys keep keep at it uh, let me know if you've got any specific questions as well uh sorry I mean, uh, there was a question there but it's only part of the question uh, yeah, so at Grant Abbott, if you've got a question, and then it will appear in orange for me. There we go, like Polyguy Studios. Um, how often do you live stream? Wednesday and Friday. So Wednesday we do a follow along like this. Oh, that's good, Spawny. I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's a nice shape, that, isn't it? Sort of uh, really sort of woody shape. Uh, yeah, so every Wednesday I do one of these, and every Friday, ah, that's a nice, and yeah. I think maybe, a, am I right? Should, it, should we go in a bit here more? looks a bit thick but I, it's great it's really great and that was really quick isn't it so this is gonna be a quick stream isn't it <laughs> people are finishing already uh, we might do some sculpting later then because everybody's sort of finishing fast um, yeah so Wednesdays we do a follow along like this and uh, Fridays I do a, I'm doing character work at the moment so a client called uh, uh, Raymond uh, who has asked me to do a character for him so it's a sort of full character sculpt and uh, workflow, much like I did for the Game Dev TV course, which I'll plug again, shall I? <laughs> um, okay, uh, so let's go back to object mode. So uh, the quick way to go back to between modes, control tab will give you this menu and you can go to object mode there. Um, did I want to go to object mode? I want to go to edit mode actually. So I'll duplicate this one. Actually, do I want a metal chunk going, is it going through the wood or is it going over the wood? What do these ones do? A lot of them go over the wood, actually. So maybe I'll go over the wood this time. Yeah. As if the piece of wood is going through the axe head. I think that is actually normal, isn't it? Proper axes. Uh, pinned messages. What's uh, what's wrong with the pinned message? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, morning start untaken. Whenever I add an object, it comes aligned to my view by default and not aligned to the world. Uh, that's interesting. I'm not sure what's going on there. There's probably some setting somewhere, but I don't know what it is. Are the follow along streams always aimed at beginners and intermediate levels? They are at the moment, yeah. Yep. Uh, because this is, uh, this is kind of in conjunction with uh, my college because uh, my students are sort of at this level. They were sort of this level and advanced a little bit. Um, so it's an option for them to follow along and join in, but it's an option for you guys to get out there as well. So thank you to Suffolk One for supporting me in this endeavor. Yeah, proper axe head has a hole in the middle. So I should just take this edge, shouldn't I? So go to edge mode two. There's one, two, and three for these in case you were confused by that. E to extrude across there. Probably scale it down a bit. And E to, ex should I do a sort of flat head at the back here? Maybe. Maybe, do I need any sort of shape at the back? Or do I want it looking really cool like some of these? Yes, I do, I do, of course I do. There's a really cool one here. So I'm looking at this one here, actually. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I like that sort of, but mine's a bit fatter than that. So I'm probably gonna go across between the lot of them because this one has a sort of chunk at the back. That one, that just has a flat head, but this one is really quite cool, isn't it? And has that weird shape at the back. So I'll probably do that as well. Uh, I'll probably do that as well. Do all of them at the same time, why not? Uh, why am I going around my model? Okay, so let's scale that in. And E to extrude and rotate and scale. And G to grab. I'm just put, moving these either side in case I want to put one down here so it goes around my um, piece of wood. It's two of the same messages. Oh, what, my pin message? I can't seem to edit the pin message. It's being really odd. There's obviously some sort of error on the pin message and it's just not letting me change it. I can't even scroll up and down. As soon as I click on the pin message, 
it goes weird and I can't scroll up and down or do anything in the stream. And it, it's, it's crashed on me. Ah, here we go. Oh, that's really annoying, isn't it? Oh, and now it's jumping all over the place. It's strange. Ah, so um, Angel of Groove. Preferences, um, uh, edit preferences, editing new objects, align to view slash world. That's what you've accidentally enabled. I can't remember who was asking the question, but thanks for that. Angel of Groove. Uh, okay, so um, that doesn't quite look right. So I'm going to go back to sculpt mode with this and just sort of play around a little bit, get this how I want it. Do I want a sharp back? Oh, this is tricky, isn't it? Because you just have loads of fun with these axes. Maybe something going up like this. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, I think so. I think so. Maybe. Maybe. I just looked at my screen down here and it looked different. It's, I think it's too... I'm just going to grab... That's the great thing about the sculpt brush. Look how much I can move together. You can, of course, use proportional edit as well. Um, but... Uh, I quite like this sort of free-flowing sculpt brush idea. I find it a little bit quicker. Okay, so I'm about there. So now all there, there is left to do is to sort of thicken these out. Uh, yeah, so I'll select my um, middle bit, whatever that is. <laughs> it's looking a lot like a pickaxe. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Pickaxes are very thin though, aren't they? Uh, okay, so uh, into edit mode and then select all E to extrude. And then we pull it out. Now the thing with this is, uh, you might be, if you're using a plane, you might be going the wrong way. And what I mean by that is if I go up to the top here and go to face direction, it's all red now because I was going the wrong way. I did that on purpose, of course, because I knew I was going the wrong way. Uh, but if you ever make that mistake, not that I made a mistake, uh, you select all and uh, shift N will reverse the normals. So the normals are pointing the wrong way. So it thinks the outside of the shape is actually pointing inwards. Uh, that's normals for you. Okay, so we've got that and it looks very blocky at the moment, but it won't for long. I'll just quickly, I'll do the, the other one first. So I'll select that, select all and E to extrude. I'll come out the other way this time because I know it's going to stay blue then. You see how it stays blue? And we'll probably just make it nice and chunky about there. Okay. Obviously, they're not overlapping at the moment. We'll get to that in a second. I always do those mistakes on purpose, don't I? Indeed. Yeah, I'm such a good teacher like that, you see. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I'll just move them manually for now. In fact, I'll, I'll change the shape of this because I want this more rounded. So let's go into edit mode. Actually, let's turn the face direction off because that's quite distracting, isn't it? We need a shortcut for that, Blender. I know you can make a shortcut because you can right-click and add to quick favorites. But I feel like that one needs its own shortcuts. So right click, add to quick favorites, and then you can press Q and it's face direction. It's quite handy that. Yeah, Q is your quick favorites. Q for quick. <laughs> okay, so uh, Control R. So I'm in edit mode, Control R. I'll do a loop cut around there. And then I can just scale in the X with those selected and make it rounded. Okay, so I think that's a nicer way. It still keeps a nice low poly. Uh, Rather than adding a cylinder uh, where you've got loads and uh, like 32, isn't it, uh, the default, this is a much simpler way to make a low poly um, axe and you can sort of follow the line and shape much easier. Uh, thanks, uh, JC. Good to hear you're getting on well with it. Uh, completely relevant, but how do you retop the character top? The character top? Oh, the top. Um, oh, well, I actually built that. Uh, using uh, generally retopo is you use a shrink wrap and snapping uh, and solidify. Uh, so if you've got those three going on, you, you can build sort of clothing uh, and I, then you don't need to retopo it uh, because I was using a multi resolution modifier. So have a look at multi resolution modifiers and how you don't need to retopo. The frustrating thing about that is there's still a glitch in the and a bug in the re, um, multi resolution modifier. Anyway, I'm just going to move this into position. So I'll go to top view for this. I'll move. Um, I'll select this all in edit mode. Uh, oh, that was weird. Select all my handle in edit mode and just grab in the X axis and move it into the middle. So it's roughly into the middle. And then this in edit mode. What's that? The Not the, the blade. Uh, select that in edit mode. Um, A to select all and G to grab. Because then my object center is roughly in the middle. It doesn't matter too much, to be honest. There we go. 
Right, so there's a bit of editing to do, but we've got a basics of a low poly X, okay? Hey, how are you? Uh, Norbert Modro, I'm fine, thank you very much. Alt N brings up the menu, Alt N. Oh, really, does it? Huh, that's good to know. Uh, so yeah, I always just shift N because there's recalculate outside and it will just, yeah, it'll just sort of recalculate it. That's usually the way, but there's lots you can do from there. Mm, there's there's some interesting stuff with normals they've been working on, isn't there? Anyway, uh, so in edit mode, I'm going to add a new cut down here, but we can't see it very well. So I'll go to wireframe, wireframe up here and uh, let's go to side view again. So I'll rotate that that way, scale it in the Z slightly. Just going to sort these out a little bit. So I don't like the way that, whoops, that was E to extrude, not R to rotate. And that one. About there. Is that, is that okay? I think, oh, I've done, I've, I've solidified it. That's why I'm doing box select so that I can select the back one as well. I forgot about that for a moment. Um, okay, so the uh, this edge loop here, so Alt left click on that. So I've selected both of them and then I can scale in the X and then it can go around uh, and be thick around my handle. Okay, that's the thinking there. So I'll go back to solid mode so you can see that a bit more easily. Okay, I feel like I'm rushing this. Um, uh, is this an okay pace for people? Are people happy? Because it's a fairly simple object, uh, but there may be some beginners out there who are thinking this is going way too fast for me. So uh, let me know, I'll, I'll let you all guide me. I'm gonna scale that down in the X, so it goes a bit sharper there. So I'm just going through and scaling these in the X. Oh, right. Alt, Alt left click, of course, Grant. Scale in the X. Alt left click selects loops, in case you didn't know. Does it matter when mesh is intersecting or better? When does it matter? Uh, if a mesh naturally, so a, a, an axe uh, head and a blade, they kind of intersect each other. So that's fine in this case. Uh, if you wanted to do it really accurately, then you'd actually put a hole in this object, but we don't need to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, you can intersect meshes, it's okay. But if you want to animate them, say I've got an arm intersecting my shoulder here. Can you all see my arm? There it is. Uh, so if they were just two separate objects and intersecting, as soon as I animate and move, you'd sort of see that it was separate. But sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that's okay. Um, so it's just an animation, you need to worry about those sort of things. And obviously you don't want loads of hidden faces, that's uh, not very optimal. Okay, for the end ones here, I actually want a blade down here, don't I? So I'm going to do Control R to do a loop cut around there so I get a blade. And if I press E and F, can you see how it conforms? When F will conform to the outside there and E is conforming to the other side, the inside there. So I want F in this case. F. Is that, that's not conforming now. E. There it is. Uh, so now it's sort of keeping the shape of my uh, blade on the outside and I'll have a blade there. So I'll just uh, move this one into position. There we go. Uh, wireframe overlay just above face orientation if want to keep eye on topology. Oh, I see, but if you're in edit mode anyway, it doesn't matter too much. But yeah, is there a wireframe overlay? Is there? Oh, I see, you can, in your overlays, uh, there's a wireframe, is there? You see, I don't usually use these things much, actually. There's, I mean, there's lots of display options as well, viewport visibility and all sorts, but I, yeah, I hardly use them, really. Uh, I've got a problem, so Red Alexia, the back of my hilt isn't filled. Ah, so you, I think you extruded the edges, the outside edges, or maybe the vertices, um, but you can just press the um, F key to fill them in. So I'll, I'll show you that, just in case anybody else is struggling with that. So let's, for some reason, let's say, um, I'll just go to my um, handle, and I'll select a few faces and delete them. Uh, okay, so uh, we need to fill these faces in. The, the, it's, it, it's a little bit awkward when you've got faces right next to each other like this, but if I press 1 and go to edit mode, and I'll go to side view, control 3 probably, um, to go to side view, I can extrude that out, extrude that out, and then select those two and F to fill. Now I've got a line of edges there. I can then press 2 to go to edge mode, and F to fill those in and F to fill those in. and you, So you can easily fill them in is what I'm saying. Dominic Wall, potato is here. <laughs> uh, 
uh, oh, in FBX, if you open it, it might be your face direction, uh, Jeremiah's mock, perhaps. <laughs> Just having a look. Uh, I did fill it in, uh, but the loop cut doesn't properly scale when I put it through the middle. So you've got some doubles then. So uh, select all, Alt M and by distance. And if you've got any doubles, it should give you a count down there. Okay. How do you make material half transparent without using glass BSDF um, slash transparent BSDF? For example, you're making an energy field and you need it semi-transparent. You would have to use, I mean, there's translucent as well, but you'd have to use one of those. Uh, I mean, there is the principled BSDF that has the trans... Actually, what is the... It's a, I can't remember the name of it. Principled BSDF. Uh, the It is transmission. Yeah, so I was thinking emission. I was getting confused in my head. Yeah, transmission uh, is your see-throughness. Yep. Uh, hello, uh, Jean. Or is it uh, Jean? Uh, you're French. Nice. Transmission. Yeah, people correcting me. You can have gold. Uh, a gold star there. Uh, it's a gold, gold, <laughs> gold cube, isn't it? Gold default cube. Angel of the Room. Minotto. <laughs> okay, so back to uh, layout mode. I feel like I'm jumping all over the place, and I don't um, uh, don't feel like I'm doing a very good job teaching today. Uh, it, but maybe this is just how I am all the time. But I'm, I've got sort of lots of going on in my head because I'm trying to uh, finish off lots of things, and I'll do all sorts. Yeah. No vertices were removed. Uh, well, that's strange. I'm trying to think what else could be the problem. I mean, there is face direction as well. Just check that. Um, and maybe up the distance of your alt, you know, alt M, your remove doubles up the distance really slightly just to see if anything's being removed there. You might have faces inside faces, perhaps. So you might have to delete a few faces or something like that. That pin message is getting on my nerves now as well. And I cannot unpin it. Oh, it's, it's just not letting me. Hate it. That's weird. Oh, and then it comes up and it gave me, oh. Yeah, tricky. Can you hear the birds? <laughs> okay. Um, right, back to the blade. So now we can grab the end here. I'm going to go to vertex mode and just grab these all down here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is go Alt M, or it might not quite work actually, but Alt M, and I'm going to merge by distance. I don't know if it's going to work, work, but if we come down here, I can slowly up the distance and hopefully, ah, the bottom ones are too close to each other. So what I'm going to do, just uh, just to make my life easier, I'll move those, GG, edge slide, right. Now select all these and Alt M, merge by distance and just changing this very slightly. Oh, that's weird. It hasn't merged them down the middle. Ah, that's very interesting. Oh, it's the order I selected them in, perhaps. But that's fine. So they have joined together. They've just merged one to another. They've snapped to each other. I was expecting them to merge in the middle and take the... But there's no option to change that. Hmm. Uh, but we can just scale in the X. Uh, uh, scale X0, and they'll align then. Scale X0. And now I've got a blade. I do feel a bit... I mean, then we've got a triangle, I know. That's all right. You've got a triangle there and a triangle there. That's okay. It does mean that I can't select loop cuts as easily, but um, that's okay. So I'm going to scale this, this in the X and just adapt my shape slightly. So scale in the X. It's going to go out a bit there. Actually, a bit more scale X, a bit more there, and a bit more there. Scale X. Uh, makes me think of scale electrics. Scale X. Anybody have that as a kid? Scale, scale electrics. Do that again because I grabbed the wrong bits. I feel like it's going to be a bit thinner down here as well. So I'm going to scale those in the X and these ones. So it sort of goes a little bit thinner and chunky at the top there. Mm, maybe I'm going to go to wireframe so I can select the back ones here and scale X. Is that working yet? Scale X, a bit thinner. And we've, we've got to this point. <laughs> Okay, add mirror or fix your vertex on other side of blade. Yeah, I mean, that uh, maybe that's what I should do. Um, so, yeah, why am I not doing it in mirror, really? That's not very sensible, is it? Because it's a symmetrical um, blade, isn't it? 
uh, and my edit point that you just have to check that that your edit points in the middle middle because any mirror that you do will go around your um, center point as they call it edit point pivot point in other programs and so forth so just that center point there so if I mirror now um, yeah, then uh, sorry I was just reading the thing uh, then uh, it should go down the middle so I'm gonna use my auto mirror tool if you haven't got auto mirror edit preferences add-ons type in mirror and there's the auto mirror make sure that's ticked and then you'll get under the edit menu you'll get the auto mirror tools I don't know why they don't have that enabled by default really but I suppose if they enabled them all they'd all be filling up everywhere so auto mirror in the X and it hasn't worked whoa that's a actually that's a different one for me that is that's a weird one why has it done that okay if it does that I'm assuming it's something to do with my rotation probably uh, so control A and rotation the scale just to be absolutely sure but they're all at set one I'm going to do the same for this one as well control A and set the apply the rotation and rotation scale let's try the mirror again edit auto mirror there we go work that time so it's just to do with my rotation of the object uh, same for the handle auto mirror and it moved really slightly didn't it that's just because the center was slightly um, away from the middle uh, what's the best way to do ridges, grooves in handles like a grip? Um, yeah, loop cuts uh, or the knife tool. It depends on the style and how high poly you're willing to go. If you want to go high poly, then loop cuts all over the place uh, because then it will keep in quads. Uh, low poly, then you're using the knife tool, I would say. I didn't, yeah, so Tin Cisco, you're quite right. I should have mirrored ages ago because I wasn't selecting some of my back vertices. That's right. Uh, I think that's a very good point. Uh, just going to do a tiny bit of editing here. So this time now I can grab in the X because I've got the mirror on. And if I scale in the X, then it's just sort of bringing that side in rather than nothing. But this is looking kind of fun, isn't it? It's working. Is it working as an X? It's not quite there for me. But now I can just select these vertices, vertices and then sort of move them into position. No, I can't because there's one there. <laughs> it doesn't make it actually that much easier, does it? But I need to. Uh, just go into wireframe and box select a few of these yeah that's all right isn't it? that's kind of cool okay there's a few things we can add though actually let's go to the discord and see how people are getting on okay so where are we up to where do we get up to oh there's some cool stuff some cool stuff happening it's nice to see that does make me remind me that it's going okay when i see that, that everybody's doing all right so i think that's where we're up to we saw uh luna lotus and owen sunny row just added to the list and case was our last one that's good good work case uh, looking good, liking the style and designs. Hopefully, you're managing to fill them out now. Uh, Chelonaut, progress, looking good. Let's see it in solid mode, though. Uh, this is good. Actually, did a while ago. James, ah, nice to see you on here. That's good. This is one of my students from Suffolk One, James Green. Well done. Uh, what I want to see is some leather straps down here next, James. That's what you're going to do next. Unless you're following along with this one to do some low poly stuff. Uh, Leo Basil, this is interesting, shiny axe, <laughs> the whole thing. Uh, looking good, Herschel and the Art Kid. How's this? How do I do the metal around the wood? Uh, so um, that's where we, let's go to solid mode. Um, so I was flat and then I extruded out and then just pulled that bit out. That makes sense? So uh, you're flat, extrude out, and then you pull those bits out so they become rounded. Have you made, uh, ever made an animated short film? Yes, but it was like 15 years ago, before YouTube even. Actually, it was more than that, 20 years ago now getting between 15 and 20 years ago and it was before YouTube so it's kind of died really ah Milan nice to see you thanks for the donation much appreciated as always hope you're doing well uh, are you joining in with our axe modeling today <laughs> or are you viewing the stars <laughs> James yeah how long have you been using blender for were you new to blender when you first started at Suffolk one or uh, has it been longer uh, techno catching up good stuff Please save the footage for uh, late birds like me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yep, yeah, it'll be. Um, you can rewind the stream and you can um, uh, watch it later. It's on. It'll be on the playlist for basic game assets live streams. Uh, yes, Frank. I'm not sure why Rick Davidson is listed as the key instructor for the course, but he is one of the instructors on the course. Uh, he does sort of the intro section and asks me questions throughout and stuff to help people along uh, but uh, but to be fair I am the main person for the course I hope Rick doesn't mind me saying that 
but yeah, um, it's actually very helpful having Rick um, on board to ask those questions and to check over my work as well uh, to make sure it's uh, all quality. The quality that you've come to expect from Gavit Media is on the Game Dev TV brand as well. Looking good, uh, <laughs> uh, Textoro Jacob probably. Uh, Spawny, looking good. It's quite interesting. I like the design. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, it's looking good. Yeah, there we go. You managed to get it around the um, the hilt. Good. Uh, this is looking good. There's, it's tricky, isn't it, when you're going around the corner like this? Uh, and yes, is it asking for trouble? It's difficult to say. I think you're just about safe there. But these bits where you've got a bit of quite a narrow uh, quad could get a bit tricky uh, but it should be okay for low poly works you're fine uh, Milan <laughs> once again today is 12th day of non-stop clouds oh no it's oh, it's really lovely where we are at the moment sorry that's make you jealous but uh, we've got the birds singing and it's fairly blue although it is a little bit hazy out but uh, sorry to hear that well you're in blendering hopefully doing the blender stuff get get to it make an axe uh, look it, it's slowly getting there aren't we that's nice uh, it's quite a betray. <laughs> it's quite a betray. Betray? <laughs> but it looks cool. It's a, a sort of hailbird thing, isn't it? There's me in the corner. Look at that. <laughs> it's an REM song or something, isn't it? There's me in the corner. Uh, I like this techno. That's a nice stylized, that's a nice style, proper axe. That. That's good. Uh, tech story, Jacob. It's getting better and better, isn't it? Uh, quite square on your handle, so maybe a loop cut down the middle and then scale it out so it comes rounded. Uh, chill or not. Oh, this looks quite cool, isn't it? Uh, maybe thin out towards the end so it comes in at sort of um, choppy angle. <laughs> That's what they call it, choppy. The choppiness of an axe. This is looking cool. Actually, I like this. Using a stencil. Um, Mercellum 83. Uh, nice work. Loon Lotus, that looks nice, doesn't it? Yep, I like that style. Hey, this is quite a fun one, isn't it? Really sort of choppy, chunky. That's good. Uh, Kiss Bell or whatever you call them. <laughs> Evan Sunny Ray, nice work. God, there's millions on here. There's absolutely millions. I'm just going to call people out. Uh, Dane, uh, Dane Rod, Castro, looking good. Uh, Minotto 200, that's, I like that. This is working, isn't it? With your grease pencil in the background as the guide. Um, uh, will you be able to tackle these kinds of fanciness on the back blade. Yep, yep, you can do that and that will work. Uh, techno, nice. Sit, fit, sit. <laughs> I'm just noticing how many people are following along. Uh, we got this This stream seems to be growing and growing. This, this is quite cool detailing now, I like that. Uh, so it's getting scary. Is that we're just going to end up me uh, commenting on people's work. <laughs> uh, then, oh, sorry, I missed one there. Uh, Herschel and the Art Kid carrying on nicely. Position of the axe to the center for auto mirror. Yep, so uh, reset your scale and your rotation. And then, oh, let's just go back to mine. And if your thingy, what do you, um, center point isn't in the middle, then you can click on it, uh, right click on it, set geometry, uh, geometry to, origin to geometry. That's what I'm trying to say. Right click origin to geometry, in object mode that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it looks like a mall, didn't it? The uh, dino's axe. Uh, where were we? Uh, still on the Discord. Uh, Den Ragon. Den Ragon. Kind of struggling. Oh, yeah, we said that one. Uh, Spawny. Uh, uh, Envisage 13. Uh, that's looking a cool one. I quite like the, the you've added your own little style there. That's cool. Kishore. Is it too many polys? 426. Nope, that's still class as low poly. That looks, look, looks good. It's getting a little bit higher down the bottom there, but I think you'll be okay in terms of if you were optimizing for a low poly mobile game, you'll still get away with it. This is quite high poly, but it still looks good. Uh, it's working quite nicely, actually. I quite like that one. Loving the style there, uh, Creer Y. That looks really good. Maybe a tiny bit more chunky at the top, so it looks a little bit, or maybe going out this way, maybe. It just looks a tiny bit bulky there. There's minor criticism because I really like that one. Really like it. Uh, this look good looking one as well from, <laughs> I don't know, it's just an expression. Uh, it's cool though. Right, right, back to it, back to it. Uh, where are we? Where's my one? Okay, so um, I think we need a little bit of detailing uh, to make it look cool. Let's have a sort of, oh, should we have this time, we'll have a strap down the bottom here. So the easy way for a strap, into edit mode, 
three to go to face mode and actually I'm gonna move these so they're ready for my strap so get that one that's what I was trying to get uh, GG to edge slide it down there and this one GG around about there that's looking good and then three to go to face mode and I'm just selecting these face loops here do I want to go that high for the no I don't really that feels just wrong I'll do that one but that feels too small I might even have because you know how these edges look quite sharp there what I might do is just do a little extrude there like this just can you see that it just sort of rounds it out a little bit same at the top I just feel like they get really sharp with low poly and it just for the sake of a few extra faces uh, rounded out the edge there also uh, the once I did the mirror these this edge loop I can select an edge loop with alt left click I could uh, round those out a bit more now now I've got the extra verts from the mirror so GG is what I'm doing to edge slide you might even want to thicken it out and just move it out this way um, perhaps um, uh, move it on the X that is G then X but an edge slide should should do the job all right so alt left click GG for edge slide and you can round them out a bit anyway so where was I, I want to select so thinking where the, the straps are gonna go I think that should be right I might actually even add a loop cut in here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this edge loop here so alt, so all the time to select a, a edge loops like I'm doing it's alt left click okay and I'm gonna press control B to bevel that way it keeps the curve which is quite nice or if I say so myself if I do say so myself um, but also I, I want that because I want to go about that high with the strap I think that looks nice I think <laughs> okay so E to extrude and scale it up uh, in fact alt no we're gonna have to scale like this aren't we that's weird Am I doing something weird here with the scale? Of course I am because I've got the mirror on. So I'm going to actually have to. Yeah, I can just. I've still got the extrude on, so I right click to set it in place. But if I press G then X now, I can just grab it outwards this way. And now I can scale in the Y. It's a little bit awkward scaling when you've got a misshapen bit like this. Can you see it's not scaling at the top in the same way? You can also, if I undo this, Alt S scales by the normals. Actually, that's much better. So I should have said that first time. So I'll undo all that because I rushed that a bit uh, and I chose a better way. So alt left click to select, I'm in face mode, alt left click to select faces all the way down. Okay, so then I'm selecting face loops or you can select one face loop and press control plus. Uh, so there's lots of ways of selecting is what I'm saying. Um, alt left click with face mode on, you can select face loops like this, that way or that way. So it depends on the way the line's going. So I'll quickly get those again. <laughs> what am I doing? There we go. Those ones. Okay, then E to extrude, right click. So you've got two, an extrusion there, it's on top of the other one. And then Alt S to scale it up. And now we've got our handle, or strapping anyway. I always think though, uh, go to edge mode and GG to bring it down. GG. So it's a little bit of a curve. It's not good to, ooh, that was weird, wasn't it? It's not good to have those really sharp edges. GG, there. Looking cool, looking cool. Tell you what, you're a genius, Grant. <laughs> okay, uh, haven't, I haven't given out any gold stars recently, have I? Uh, I've got a question though, where we? I've tried the way you mentioned with the transmission, although I'm working with a, with a black color set as environment. Any tips on how you make it, make energy translucent? Yeah, what's the best way? Maybe I might end up using something like the Fresnel node as my plugged into the transparency because that gets the edges. Um, there's lo there's loads of ways, um, but it can get really complicated very quickly. Uh, look up the Fresnel node because that's often used for energy because it's the outside reflectiveness. And sometimes that can, if you use that properly, you can make it look like an energy glow. Have a look at it anyway. What are the competitions on Discord? Yeah, uh, if you go onto Discord, uh, there's a competition channel and the current competition, remind me, someone to remind me what's the current competition. I haven't looked at the competition for ages. I've been so busy. Save, save, save. Thanks, uh, Belage B. Right, uh, file, save as. How, long, how are we doing? Right, save as. It's taking me a long time to do this, Axe, but it's going to look awesome. I'm going to do a few th cool frilly bits in a second. It's going to be amazing. Uh, follow along, shoot. save thanks for the reminder 
<laughs> uh, do you know the crypto stamp? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, it's Alien, isn't it? Thank you. Alien, of course it is, because we did Alien Fruit last week. Oh, God, dear. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, who deserves a gold star for these comments? Right. Uh, where are we? So, uh, who told me to... Yeah, Alt S. You can have a gold star for that, um, Corey S, because you got to the Alt S before I did. Uh, Bilaj B for telling me to save. You get a gold star as well. Gold cube now. It's gold cubes. And <laughs> none of this means anything at all. It's just me saying you've got a gold star. It makes you feel good, though, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and who said alien first? Erwin Sunny Ray. There you go. You've got a gold cube as well. Erwin gets the gold cube, remember? Gold <laughs> For Alien, indeed, yep. Thank you, Corey, yes. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's something about it, isn't there? You tell someone they've got a gold cube and they're very excited. It is it's big money as well. Uh, big money, the gold cubes. <laughs> it's weird. It, it, it's just like a special shout-out. Special shout-out from Grant. You get the gold cube. Right, we're going to make this look even more fantastic. I know you're probably thinking, can you even do that, Grant? But you can. You can You can take this a step further. I'm going to add little notches in the strap so it looks kind of cool. Now, you might not want to do this if, you, if you're worried about poly count and you want to keep it nice and simple. There, you've got your axe. That's great, isn't it? And it is great. I'll have you know. But you might want to go further and have a little notch in your uh, pieces. So, Control-B to bevel. And it brings out a, a, a bit like this. And then wheel up once, if that, oh, once, please. Uh, then it will create that little bit in there, the, a, a loop. All right, so I've done my bevel and I've got one bit in here. I can then, actually, what's the best way to do this to create a notch? Because I probably want the handle coming through as well. Hmm, I might not be doing this the best way. Let's have a look, let's have a look. Okay, I, I'm gonna delete that for now, De delete faces. And then I'll do, yeah, so I'll select this outside. This is not quite how I do it normally, but I'm going to do it anyway. Extrude and scale. So this is the um, the sort of uh, strap, and then we can fill that in. So F, F, to, oh, well, G to grab, F to fill, and then we just want to do a knife cut there. Okay, so I probably went a bit quick, but can you see how that's a sort of leather strap now that's going around it? I can then just move these into position a bit, so it looks like the strap's got some thickness. There we go. So it's a notch in the strap. Genius, Grant. Genius. I'm going to do that again because um, I went quick because I'm so good at modelling. I go so fast with these things. <laughs> Let's do another one up here somewhere. Maybe at the top. I'm going to uh, GG to bring it down a little bit. And I'll GG this one. GG. Good game, guys. Good game. Uh, and then select this. So Control-B to bevel. And remember to wheel up once so you get that cut in the middle. And this is going to be a small one this time. So... Actually, I better make it the similar to the other one, actually. No, I'll just make this a small one. So I can delete this, faces. And with this one, I can probably just fill in some faces. So if I select this, E to extrude and pull it along the X axis into the middle, then I can just, ooh, is this the best way? Am I doing, am I rushing? I think this will be right. Uh, and then two to edge mode and just fill these in. F to fill. And have to fill. It's a good idea to get used to that process of trying to sort of create notches and things, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, sort of fiddle about with things like this. That's too high though, isn't it? So I'm going to G to grab and pull that down to about here because that's the sort of thickness of the strap, I reckon. Something like that. Isn't it? Yep. Are we all good? How are we doing? Uh, Ten days motion tracking for my entry to the competition. Norman, uh, Norman Mai, that's going to be awesome, isn't it? Is it May or Mai? Norman May, Mai. Uh. <laughs> uh, let's see how you're getting on. Um, do I have any kids? No, I don't have any kids. Uh, I am kid-free. What am I doing? I'm looking at the Discord, aren't I? Right, where do we get up to? Here, we got up to here. So we've got Doldrum 01, looking cool. Minotto 200, are you gonna have a sort of default cube? Of course, clever. Uh, you could make that into a log actually, I mean, default log. You get those in Blender um, 2.9 now, that's in the new version, default logs they have. Activate, activated that nicely. Oh, that looks good, and I? I like that shape. Uh, second entry for the live stream. This is good actually. It's, uh, 
it's quite I like the thinking the sort of stylized thinking how can I really simplify it and make it uh, really chunky that's good good case well done uh, Strife Burgers these names what are people thinking <laughs> Strife Burgers looking good like that uh, <laughs> the Gabbit Gold default cube oh yes uh, Techno looking nice there looking nice <laughs> Uh, Dressy fiddle, not the only one with straps. Oh, it's looking good, looking good. That's very nice, isn't it, Techno? Nice, uh, solid shape. It's working nicely. Uh, it's working nicely though, um, Anastasia. Uh, pray for it. It looks cool. It looks cool. This is nice as well. Urban Sunny Ray, sort of a really sort of chunky, old-looking thing, isn't it? Uh, Herschel and the Art Kid. Nice progress there as well. Where is your middle teeth? Uh, it's just how I'm born. It's, it's got a big gap in my teeth. I know it's crazy, isn't it? But uh, that's what makes me quirky and cool. Honestly. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you always saying one of my students? Do you do something else like paid courses or live teaching? I work at a college. And this is usually my day at college. Uh, so going live like this um, uh, is so that my students can sort of do some live lessons with me. But I think it's only James Green who's on here. <laughs> <laughs> All the other students have given up on me long ago. Get fed up with me, I tell you. Um, but yeah, so I teach at a college called Suffolk One. Uh, yeah, hello, Ezra Little. <laughs> uh, is Susu still with us? Are you still with us? Uh, and let us know how you're getting on. Oh, uh, I better just close that in case it's any, anything important that you mustn't see. Not that, is it? Not that I have any secrets, to be honest, but <laughs> just in case, because people don't... If people are contacting me, they might not want to be on full screen. They're going live and stuff. I should actually mute that for now. Uh, that's actually Lucy from Game Dev TV. And that was because I put some links to courses on my channels. Uh, so yeah, if you don't know already, I've made a course. Uh, it's amazing. Oh, it's amazing. It is just, and you get to make a character from start to finish. Uh, full triple A game ready. Uh, character. It, it, uh, I'm sort of half saying that sarcastically, but it, it kind of is, although we're doing shortcuts a lot of the time with the retopology and things. Uh, but there we go. Uh, we're making a character like this one. This is sort of like the slightly more advanced version, which you can follow along. Um, uh, so it, you're given less guidance on that. But um, I give character reference sheets, you see, and we've got a simple one, which I'll, I'll show you in a bit, the actual sort of uh, results-ish that we get to. If, you, if you're interested, you might not be. <laughs> Uh, do you make a game yourself? No, I've never actually made a game myself. I've been in a team, uh, well, I'm still the artist for a team, uh, uh, doing Atlas Empires. You could probably look it up. I think there's some footage now of that. I mean, um, yeah, uh, but I did all the buildings for that. Uh, will there be updates to the course? I see it stops at UV. Yeah, I'm still working on it. It's, it's going through. Don't worry, you're fine. Uh, we go all the way to, uh, well, we, I wasn't going to. <laughs> But then loads of people were saying, do we get to put it in Unity? Do we? And it was just uh, question after question. So we're going into Unity with it. Uh, but Rick's probably going to be lumbered with that job because I don't know much about going from a fully fledged character into Unity. So we'll see. Uh, thanks, Rassil. Love from Bangladesh there. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're rigging, uh, we're animating, but all in a sort of simple way. So for beginners and really quick ways of doing it, sort of automated ways and stuff like that. So we're using Mixamo and uh, using the remesh to read topology and that sort of stuff. I'll talk about the tougher techniques, but uh, we'll be doing it in the simple ways, in the course this is. Uh, anyway, uh, where are we? What about Unreal and uh, that Nanite graphics stuff is going to be mind blowing. Yeah, it, you'll still need to make characters in the old way for the moment. Uh, and it's going to be like that for a good amount of time. But that Nanite stuff is awesome, isn't it? Uh, so making backgrounds and uh, it's going to be the scan. Whoever scans is king at the moment. I'll tell you, it's amazing. Can you program a tiny bit? <laughs> Do you use InstaMesh? I was thinking about that, but the Remesh did a really good job. So I just kept with that. Um, but you could take it out to InstaMesh for the course if, if you know about that. Um, I was going to talk through it, but it just seemed to... Um, it was too much on retopology and I thought it got a little bit boring. I work on a 2D animation in Blender. Cool. Are you using grease pencil then? That's good stuff, isn't it? Okay, so we've done the strap for the... Um, is that working? Do you think that's working? Might be a bit thick. And at, at times it's like this. You, you probably have to sort of go in and just uh, edit your shape really slightly as you see fit. Um, and make sure you're happy as you're going along. And it's important to keep looking at your shape and making sure it's all good. 
where can I find the times for future streams? Yeah, uh, so Wednesdays at uh, 3 p.m. BST, so the same time as today, and the same for the Friday stream. So I'm, I'm doing them at three o'clock. So Wednesday and Fridays at three o'clock for me, that is BST, British summertime, 2 p.m. GMT, that is. Uh, modern building from reference photo. I think you've contacted me about that before, haven't you? It's 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 tough to fit everything in. I haven't I haven't done my quota for tutorials this week. Actually, it's been a bit of a pain. I've been doing lots of different things. Right, we're going to do a few sort of straps around the top here because I think that's a fun thing to learn. Um, uh, we probably won't get time to paint this piece. It's actually taking me a long time. I'm chatting a lot, chatting too much. We'll do some notches in the um, in the blade. Is that that always uh, uh, that always works, isn't it? I feel like. Is my is it working? It's sort of half tomahawk, half knot at the moment, and I'm not sure it's it's working for me. Hmm. Anyway, let's do a notch in the blade. I feel like I want these bits. Uh, let's let's go to wireframe, and I feel like these bits need to go down now. I just feel like that's going to make it look like a more convincing axe for the style that it is. Yeah, I'm gonna go that way. Uh, it may may not may not be there, but it's it's working for me. Actually, that needs to stay the same place because that's the blade going there. But yeah, we're doing notches in the blade now. It's having a good look around. Is that is important? Uh, it's difficult for me whilst I'm. Uh, yeah, it's a very fat axe head, isn't it? Uh, but I quite like that. I'm going for a sort of chunky look. It's a stylized axe head. Uh, axe axe head. <laughs> Uh, using reference bearded axe or well, there's no reference but you could use a reference if you want to it's a bearded axe is that what it's called bearded axe what's that I'm gonna have to look it up now bearded axe I'll look it up off the screen just in case <laughs> bearded axe bearded axe oh is that what they are bearded axe okay that's what a bearded axe is <laughs> it's a bit like that isn't it it's just a stylized one oh, there we go that's the sort of thing a bearded axe that's what it is see all these people about know about axes <laughs> ah, you made the well, Lord Icebreaker. Good stuff. Okay, uh, so yeah, so it's sort of bearded axe, apparently. Uh, so let's make a notch. I think a notch down here would be good. So for this, the probably the best way is the knife tool. So I just come in here, K for knife tool, cut there. And then if you press E, you can do another cut. It's quite good. So the knife tool. And with the knife tool, always go from a vertice. Vertice, vertex, <laughs> vertice, <laughs> from a vertex, it, it's, it makes things better. We should actually just be able to grab this in uh, this way. So let's, it's a cool technique this. So turn snapping on, because I want this to snap to this thing here. So if I press G to snap, no, what G to grab, turn snapping on, vertex, what are you doing? Crap? Turn snapping on, click the vertex, right? Now we'll snap to vertex, so I can snap to vertex like this. but. That did work, actually. Oh, of course, because it's got the uh, clipping turned on, so it's stuck in the middle anyway. So I didn't need to do my complicated approach, which was Shift X. So he's turned snapping on, and you've got a notch in the middle there. I <laughs> wasn't expecting to do that easy. Get your axe to dough forge in the in fire, if it will kill. <laughs> uh, I feel like your handle above the axe may be too long. Mm, I think I think it's too thin actually yeah I know what you mean there's something about it that's not quite fitting is there I've got a feeling that I'm gonna to go to wireframe just do a bit of editing here All right, let's go to front view not front view side view and maybe oh I've got snapping on <laughs> just sort of gonna go a bit this way and maybe a bit this way this might not be working, but it's good to try these things out. You can always undo, can't you? I don't know. Is that working? It's yeah, maybe this is not working. Actually, I'm going to undo that. Let's undo that. Actually, I prefer what I was doing there. Yeah. Okay. That, so, um, obviously, if you didn't know, Control Z is undo, but Control Shift Z is redo. Um, but I'm just going to scale this up slightly. Well, I'm going to um, so. Uh, set origin to geometry otherwise it's scaling up from the cursor so scale this up and move it out so it's sort of a weird hand axe look there 
Yeah, it's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. Now let's so I'll, I'll look at people's comments and what they're thinking. Uh, can you keep this live stream saved so late? Yep, always. It's always. It's this is actually in my uh, live stream playlist, but for game assets, so you can check the playlist and you can see all my live streams. Half does seem a bit small. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Depends if you have auto merge on. Uh, not sure what that. Oh, that's that's to answer someone else's question. Backseat modelling, yeah, it's it, true. It looks nice, thank you. Okay, yeah. so we're, we're sort of getting there, I think. Um, maybe, maybe this needs to be a bit thicker, doesn't it? I'll go into edit mode, and I can select some face loops. Just here, I feel like maybe it needs. I'm going to press Shift Z so it doesn't scale in the Z axis, and then it's got a bit more. Maybe, maybe. Let's have a look. But it might need a, a drastic change, really, mightn't it? So let's have a think. And it is good to do this. It's good to do this. Take your time over things. Uh, really step back. It's good to take a break, actually. Uh, but just move it around. I mean, you can duplicate it if you're worried, and then uh, that's probably a bit nicer, isn't it? Um, because, yes, yeah, so I suppose what I could do, Shift-D to duplicate, move it off to the side, and then really edit it uh, and change it drastically. So then you can sort of see how it's going to look. Uh, if it's uh, really curved or something like that or maybe even we can go a bit more drastic than that uh, so I'll duplicate this one shift D duplicate and we will uh, scale X minus one why did that not work scale X minus one oh I'm doing it scale Y minus one <laughs> scale Y minus one and we can go really stupid like that but that's that's dreadful but it's it's good to try these things out and check out which one you like uh, and I'm still I'm preferring this one, but uh, this one can have a sort of inward facing. Yep, uh, still sort of maybe a flat one as well. So let's select these. So it just loses its curve, and that actually might look a bit better. See, so um, that's that's kind of how you can, uh, what do they call it? Um, like creating thumbnails artists do to do their concept art. It's a similar sort of thing. You're just sort of uh, doing some blocking out, seeing which one you like, and then uh, then that's the one you continue to work on. Uh, and it's good to do that every now and again. So I think these two don't work. This one, I prefer this one. Maybe, do I prefer this one? Let's go to solid mode and have a quick look. And then view them from the other way as well. It's, it's weird that, but it changes you, the way you look at it. The axe head is probably a bit too long, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's kind of working. I think I'm preferring this one the most at the moment. And I think it's just a little bit too... Is it too big, actually, now? <laughs> I should uh, move that um, in the uh, Shift X, shouldn't I? Just let me think. When using the knife tool, how can you cut through the mesh? I wasn't able to use mirror modifier. Then you have to you actually have to go all the way around your mesh or uh, cut. Um, so if you're looking at mesh side on, you'd cut it all the way around like this. Just as if you haven't got the mirror, you just do the other bit that you haven't uh, with the mirror. That makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. What is the shortcut to making a torus thinner? Uh, uh, probably uh, in edit mode, Alt S, so scale by the normals. Uh, <laughs> Milan, what are you up to? You've got a link for us there. Are you... <laughs> that's a, a cool... Uh, that's a very cool lens. Uh, really cool, actually. <laughs> uh, warn the birds about copyright. That song may be taken. Uh, be careful of copyright, guys. <laughs> uh, can you turn cavity on? I suppose I could. Um... Uh, where is cavity? I, I never use it. Is it in the Mac caps or is it in? It's yeah, probably in here, isn't it? Yeah, cavity. Well, that looks weird though. Why is it looking so weird? I don't like it with cavity on. <laughs> but I suppose it probably is easier for you guys to see. But what's happened to my blade? Oh, actually, my blade has gone weird. Oh, that's probably for my scaling, isn't it? Ah, oh, no, I've messed it up. I've actually messed my blade up, haven't I? 
<laughs> it's probably a good idea that turn cavity on. Thank you very much. Yeah, can you see clippings on though? So that well, let's select all, grab in the X, and just move it out, and then get the clipping on. G then X. I don't know quite how I did that, but I did that. <laughs> I did a thing, uh, and then and it's not quite in position either, is it? Let's just move that into position. Not sure why that happened. I probably did something stupid. Usually the way, isn't it? Okay, so I'm liking this one the most now. So uh, I will hide these, move to new collection and call them spares. I like to have a spares collection where I get rid of things uh, just in case I want to bring them back. Let's uh, move this back to the center. So uh, three to go to side view and G to grab, move them back into the center. It's getting there, isn't it? Looking kind of cool. Okay, so uh, yeah, we've got half an hour to finish this thing off. Right? Check Discord, check Discord. Quite right, actually. See how people are getting on. So, um, are you still live streaming? Yes, Prog C. Come and see me. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, uh, <laughs> some stuff happening now, isn't it? Oh, wow, there's lots. Uh, join the masquerade. Join the masquerade, like it. Uh, cool, liking that. Uh, zoom in a bit when you take a screen capture, though. Uh, <laughs> why is this happening? Okay, well, we'll have a look, shall we? Uh, into Pixel, what? Oh, it's going weird. Ah, uh, now I don't know much about dynamics, uh, but uh, your scale does matter. That's the first thing. So I'm trying uh, because I'm doing a two, um, tutorial series on that treasure chest, and it was a real pain when it got to the end because uh, the scale um, of my objects was all out, and they started intersecting each other. The other thing that you can look at, and this um, other people might be interested in this, but in oh crap, I can't remember where it is now. Ah, uh, ah. Oh, I'll have to look it up again. It's, oh, it's in scene, isn't it, in scene. Uh, you've got rigid bodies world. Uh, and if you've got some rigid bodies, look at the settings there, they might help you. Uh, and look up what they do, but, but that will probably solve your problem. Um, hopefully, let's get back to rendered mode, is it normal? But anyway, whatever it is. Okay, so we're back in here, back to Discord. Hopefully that helps you. Uh, default has an ax buddy. Oh man, it's, that never use monkeys. <laughs> Uh, better, but I still don't like it. I think it's looking pretty cool, actually. Yeah, oh, I see the, the topology. That's working better. Don't be afraid of triangles in low poly work, uh, and you might need them in this particular bit, but I'm gonna, let's talk about this a bit. So there's no sort of pen tool, but you could have a, a cube in here. So uh, a line going down there, and then a line there, so it sort of becomes a cube. Hopefully that makes sense, uh, a WW kayak. Uh, great fun, looking good. I like the little notches, nice. Oh, look, there's some straps there, Lunar Lotus. That looks good, doesn't it? Tiftis, uh, tiftis, <laughs> looking nice. Uh, Minota, I ran out of ammo. You can hit your enemy with this part. Jeez. <laughs> nice, Comrade Racken. Looks good, actually. Uh, Abbott, so two T's, please, Abbott. <laughs> Very precious about my name, definitely. It's a silly name, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it's my name, so I shouldn't complain and shouldn't get annoyed at my parents or anything, but um, Abbott, I don't know, it, because there's loads of Abbots around, but there's, it was really rare to see an Abbott and everybody spells it wrong. Uh, and then obviously when you have students, they take the mix slightly because it's Grant. Uh, well, it was Mr. Rabbit, which became Rabbit, of course. And uh, other students, a bit of uh, media studies and that sort of thing. Well, it's, it, you, there's so much you can do with it. <laughs> Uh, looking really good, Herschel and the Art Kid. Oh, this is quite fun, isn't it? Look at this. Oh, it's all happening here. A bit of sculpting going on. And in fact, is it sculpting? Could just be sort of modelling, actually. It looks good. Looks quite fun. Looks very thin in places, but that's the style, isn't it? But um, I like the chunky style. Join the Masquerade, looking really cool. Uh, Mar Marcellum, 83. This looks nice. Is that sort of hammer as well? I can't quite tell with the edges, so give us a 3D view as well. Nice. Um, top bow, nice. Oh, that's a good idea to have a notch in there and notch up there as well, like that. This is looking good as well, Andre. And a doldrum, looking fantastic. Yeah, Urban Sunny Ray. Whoa, we're doing really well. Uh, Jonathan Tisme, uh, looking good. Uh, Chelanaut, looking great. There, yeah, that's that's good. But these poles might cause you problems. So I'd be I'd be wanting to make a, a square here, like that. Uh, yeah, so going 
this is this is a quad but when a quad sort of inverts on itself that can cause issues so just make a make a square there so a line down there a line down there and dissolve these two does that make sense actually that doesn't that doesn't make quads though does it yeah i'm thinking this through actually actually a line there and a line down there so a line up there as well is that going to work line up there to there so can you see yeah there we go i've got it figured out in my head there to there so your pole is right in the middle and that should be fine so up there and to there and out to there and up there and out to there making sense i feel like i'm killing it on that one it's not not good i set the margin too low is that um the margin too low is that on the is that where i said it was i can't remember which one it is now okay so doing well there looking good back to um my ex oh i haven't looked at the stream either um right oh there's lots of interpixel thanks cool um uh, you is a great knowledge book thank you very much it's weird I, f I feel like i hardly know anything in blender it's such a massive program uh, but i suppose i've been using it for like 20 years but uh, and I always say it's on and off that is so um, if if you add it all together and I was using it all the time it'd probably be about five or six years um, but yeah, I suppose you do build up knowledge but I still feel like I know nothing in the program uh, okay uh, let's uh, uh, yeah so we're getting there right um, some straps now I think straps the best way in my opinion uh, is to once again I'm gonna choose a face from here and I'm going to shift D to duplicate, duplicate it out. Now it's got a mirror modifier on already, so I don't need to add a mirror modifier, but I'm going to press P to separate by selection, P to separate. Uh, my colleague mentioned that one. I love that. C to separate, try and remember these things. And then we can just uh, edit this into position. Oh, not that one though, in the wrong one. Into object mode, back into edit mode with this one. And then we'll just uh, move these into position up here and just sort of build a, a thing that goes round. I'll have to select these two and pull them outwards and select this one and pull them inwards and I can select these two and E to extrude and clip that together like that okay so I'm just doing a sort of strap that goes around the end of the axe so E to extrude E to extrude E to extrude can you guess what, guess what I'm gonna do next uh, right now moving them into position just uh, help them go around the corner like this. So just uh, free form modeling, stick with the plane, and then the magic comes. Hold on, I'll just move this into position up here. So it sort of wraps around the top there. And sort of try and keep it fairly uniform throughout, but we want a little bit of the low poly look. And there we go, we've got a strap going around it. Okay, then we go to the modifiers and we add, and we actually, in fact, tell me what I add. What do I add here? What do you, what do you reckon? What modifier am I gonna add? We haven't done a gold cube for a while. Who gets the gold cube? Gold cube coin. Uh, is the treasure chest coin tutorial coming soon? Yeah, I'm working on it at the moment, but it's being an absolute pain. Uh, and I complicated it by animating it. So animating the, because it's, it's okay, I can do it, but um, for it to work on a tutorial and people not contact me loads with loads of problems saying, well, why isn't this working? Because there's so much that can go wrong. Uh, uh, so I haven't released one yet, but I'll get to it. So it is, it's not the shrink wrap, uh, but you could, but I don't need to in this case, because it's low poly. It is the Australi Austrian stamp lover. It is the solidify. You get the gold cube. Well done. So add modifier, solidify. Look at this. I'll minimize the mirror and there's the solidify. So uh, it's quite chunky at the moment, but that's all right. We can have it sort of digging in and that's probably help us to be honest. And I can just pull this out this way. Maybe pull this up a little bit there. Uh, and it's a nice chunky um, strap that's going around the outside there. Maybe that one's coming this way a bit. This one tucking in a little bit. And there we go, we've got this strap going around the outside. It looks cool, doesn't it? it? Looks cool, yeah, yeah. Solidify for thickness, indeed. I mean, yeah, you could do a subdivision surface modifier on all this in a sense. I mean, it's, it gets tricky where it's got triangles, but uh, it will end up looking a bit blobby and it'll have to sort of um, sharpen edges up with support loops or and that sort of thing but um, we're doing low poly low poly style hi oh, Grant ha, uh, you have got um, you have get good at blender series yep do you consider making get good at sculpting series maybe uh, yeah I could do that that'd be a good one 
I, I like the sound of that because I quite like sculpting. I've got a, a sculpting playlist. I suppose I've kind of already done it. Look at my sculpting playlist and then get back to me and see if you what you would do differently. Yeah, um, because that uh, my sculpting introduction to sculpting playlist kind of does that. But let me know what you think. I have a check, question check Discord. Uh, I usually take questions through here. Oh, it's, it's getting very complicated. Ever felt like you were uh, were to make something simple, but to then remain stuck for a while just because you forgot one simple step, and you've got to watch some websites to refresh your mind? Yes, all the time, all the time. Uh, like um, what was it? Like cavities. Um, I couldn't quite remember where they were the other day. In fact, I did work it out, but I can usually work it out these days. But still, every now and again, I think, well, what, uh, how do I do that again? And I have to look at some. Uh, even I've looked at my own tutorial in the past, thinking, how did I do that again? And you look at my own tutorial and think, oh yeah, that's right, like IK and stuff like that, which I don't do very often. <laughs> so it's weird looking at your own tutorials, teaching yourself literally on that. Okay, so I'm gonna Shift D to duplicate. I'm not gonna Alt D because I want to change the shape slightly and then I'm gonna rotate this around. It's got a weird center point, but that doesn't matter. Oh, I'll just press E to extrude, rotate. So it's gonna go like this. And then we can just edit it a bit. So into edit mode. And the great thing about the solidify, we only have to edit that outside we don't have to worry about any inside meshes and stuff. So I only got these two to edit and modify. Lovely stuff. Thank you, Mr. Solidify. So I'm moving these into position. Look at that. Oh, yes. Sort of working. I feel like these two are in the wrong place, though. Is that working? Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> um, oh, hang on. Uh, what's going on? Not a chat. Uh, yes, wasn't a sculpt tutorial too. Good idea. Sorry, I missed. I'm not sure that. Um, yes, I want. A, sorry, there's. Um, uh, you've got an apostrophe, you don't need one. I <laughs> want to sculpt your too, cool. Anybody else want sculpting tutorials and uh, sort of get good at sculpting series? And uh, if you've got any ideas, give me a shout. Because I'd like to do that one because that's something that's fairly simple for me to do because I'm really comfortable with sculpting. Um, but um, I can do it because I'm really hectic at the moment trying to finish off the course, but I could probably do that at the same time. Um, right, Yanus uh, P. Uh, connecting parts with different number of vertices is a pain. Example, connect the base of a cube to the base of a cylinder. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's like the the, the million dollar question in a sense. Uh, when you're hard surface modeling and you think, well, I want a cylinder and join it to a cube and then, but the topology doesn't work. Look at my Get Good at Blender series and that will sort of teach you the ways of topology rather than trying to just join objects like that. It, it gets complicated. <laughs> it's your approach, the way you make concepts stick in our heads. Thank you very much. Uh, what helps you get to a point and then say, do it yourself after initial shock, uh, you surprise yourself. <laughs> uh, I, oh, my, my stream just jumped there. Uh, sorry, I've, I've lost the question now. Uh, where are we? I just looked at one of your earliest tutorials and oh god, your intro. Yeah, my intro. I just got rid of it because it's pointless one now. I feel like I need a really quick, snappy intro. Anybody got any ideas? Let me know. I have a metal around my wood. Uh, I don't think I need to put ropes on it. You don't have to put ropes on it. I'm just sort of thinking, so because you might have a strap in there if you're, at, you're overusing it. Um, you're a Viking and you're killing lots of these intruders. <laughs> They're not necessarily intruders. Actually, Vikings were dreadful because they went around sort of pillaging, didn't they? Uh, so you're a Viking and you've killed lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> innocent people and your axe is getting a bit wobbly you might strap it up at the end <laughs> evil viking uh i don't know what it is but yours and blender guru's voice is an am asmr voice for me <laughs> thanks lots of people say that about my voice it's a bit croaky at the moment um where are we up to um i already watched your sculpting videos they're really nice but i don't know how to get even better okay um, only thing I'm doing is sculpting every day. Yeah, that's that's cool. I need methods to improve, I guess. Okay, I'll try and figure something out. I'll try and figure something out. But it is just that. It's practice and practice. Uh, <laughs> get good at dancing series, please. Yep, I'll be on to that. Um, do you know, I quite like break dancing, but I'm really rubbish at it. <laughs> 
I used to be into gymnastics as well, you see, so it sort of coincides slightly. But I injured myself too much. Uh, hello, just used one of your tutorials on baking texture with multi-UV maps. Really helpful. Good to hear it. Ludwig, Ludwig uh, Lutoa. Um, Grant, problem with the stream? Nope, we're okay. Um, I, I think we're okay. I think it might be your end. Sorry about that. There's been a good connection all the way through and there's no problems this end. Do the get good sculpt. I need it. Cool. Uh, please do more sculpting retopology to low poly. Okay. Can you make 10 minutes challenges like Enfensia? Um, yeah, possibly. I feel like I'd be stepping on his toes because he doesn't really well. <laughs> and they're really good, aren't they? Uh, what do you think of Unreal Engine 5? It's, I've got a video and about that saying, is that is this now the future of, uh, is this the new normal, you know? Uh, no normal maps is the new normal. That's how I was, what I should have titled it, shouldn't I? Uh, uh, where are we? For stiff straps like that, is there a trick to equalize the real width of the strap after a manual vertex reposition? That's a good question. Yes. Do you know what you could do is you could do uh, solidify that way and then solidify that way. Not sure that would work actually. I don't know is the answer to that one. I'm not sure. I can't really think of an obvious way of doing that. Yeah, that's a good question, that. Good question. So the question sort of being, uh, you want a nice even strap. The thing is, straps do sort of bend in on corners like this. So I wouldn't really want an even strap, but I can see that mine's a little bit uneven. But I, I, I know where you're going with that. Um, uh, where are we? Um, I learned uh, Blender many thing from your channel. Thanks, teaching on YouTube. No problem, Vijay Va. Vijay Va. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Alex Martin. Blender during quarantine. Yep, it's the only way. <laughs> Indonesia here. Polygon asset. 3D game have to be consistent. If it's a triangle, then everything has to be a triangle. No, you can have triangles and quads. Everything gets converted to triangles in the in the end. Dark side. Hello, nice to see you. Are you working on any indie games? No, not indie games. I'm working on um, with the Atlas Empires team. They're supposed to release that. I think they've released it in Canada. I don't know why that's a test market for them, but I think they've re released it in Canada this week. So that should be out soon. So you'll get to see my beautiful artwork. Um, what about material priority order? Uh, ah, yeah, so we'll go to the texturing. I'm, I'm, I need to rush now, don't I? I feel like um, I like, I would like it if it had another sort of strap here. So I'm gonna move a little bit quicker now. Scale that down as if it's sort of wrapped around the inside there. So I'm going to um, go into edit mode, delete a few faces on this one. Uh, delete faces. And then I'm just going to grab those uh, ending faces and grab them in there. So it's sort of like it's wrapped around a bit. Make sense? Of course it does, because Grant said it must make sense. <laughs> so I'm just moving those into position. Uh, this vertex here, move that into position there. Into position there. Wait, get into position you. Okay, so sort of got a, a strap on the inside there, you see, that's not great actually, but it's, <laughs> you got the idea, I believe. Uh, it just needs a bit of, it just needs a bit of tidying up, that's all. Rotate Z. Ah, oh, my silly pivot point in the wrong place. Uh, G. So, one to go to edit, um, edit, ah. Right, I'm in wireframe and I'm going to just move that in. That's what I'm doing. Is that better? Not sure that really works actually. I was expecting that to look really cool, but it just looks okay. It's wrapped around there. That's that's cool. Okay. Uh, right. What was I doing? Oh yeah, texturing. Okay. Let's go to the shade editor. Oh, oh I haven't looked at the stream, uh, the Discord for a little while. Let's quickly just. I'll be quick. Um, I think I should make the handle longer. It's tricky. I mean, it's a style, isn't it? It looks cool. This might come a little bit close, so it sort of looked in danger of hitting your hand, which. Uh, and I do like to think of, would it work um, as an axe uh, a lot of the time? And uh, cartoon axes don't always work, but there's, but when you're sort of exaggerating something, try and exaggerate it as if it's for real life to a degree, to a degree. Oh, it's only very, very nice. And then Ragan, inconsistent style. Uh, looks good though, looks good, like it. Um, yes, that's the thing. Yeah, but then it goes through there, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Try this maybe. That's what I was roughly thinking there. 
but you could bring these into a pole if you're worried about them so they can come and the triangle can be there which is okay because then you can get rid of that there it's a tricky one though isn't it so get rid of this one and bring those poles those vertices in with that one you still have a triangle there actually wouldn't you no you wouldn't have a triangle oh, try it anyway see how you get on see how you get on um don't need ropes on that one it looks really cool I like it um herschel and the art kid yeah i love that uh oh very uh, tiny details careful with tiny details and low poly work but it does look cool um the uh golden part not uh, i want to smooth only the golden part not the wood now yeah it, it, um look up auto smooth and you might need to mark sharp with a few areas just look that up oh james green this looks quite interesting doesn't it? i like that leather strap looking good Anastasia looking good. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Masato. Uh, I like it. You're getting there though, getting there. Not even familiar with the key bindings, but definitely getting there. This looking good. Keel block. Minotto 200. Looking good. Kiwi. Uh, looking good. Urban Sunny Ray. This is great stuff. Oh, this is quite an interesting one with lots of holes in as well. Um, excellent stuff. Uh, Right, so uh, back to the model and let's go to shady mode. So I'm into shady mode. Well, I have to click on the X, full stop or period key if you're American or if you're using the American language. And let's see what we've got. So uh, it's simple to start off with. Keep it simple. So we've got these objects. So I need to, um, I'll just add a simple brown color for this one. So I'm going to call this um, handle brown. It's a good idea to say which object it's going on to, but also the color as well, because then you can easily find them. So change the color, base color there, to a brown. Probably go a bit darker, somewhere around there to start off with. I prefer a bit more roughness on the woody bits, so I'm gonna to go to about 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And that's great, but our hand, our, our strap here needs a different color. So what do we do about that? Well, uh, in the slots, you've got another slot here, you can add material slots. And this is the way you do it for um, a quick way of doing it for low poly. There's several ways. It's sort of like the quick, easy way of doing it. There's more technical ways of UV unwrapping and things as well you can do. But this is a nice, easy way. So slot two will create there, uh, and I'll create a new texture for it. So we're in slot two, new texture. And this is going to be red. So red, sort of uh, purpley, sort of reddish strap around about there somewhere. Okay. But it's not appearing. Okay. What I need to do is come into um, uh, edit mode and select those uh, faces. So actually I'm going to deselect the faces of the wood because that's probably a bit easier. So there and there. Have I got them all? Yes, I've got them all. So I've just left with the um, the strapping stuff. Yep. And it's going to be sort of red leather. That's what I'm thinking. I'll look at that in a sec. Uh, so uh, now I need to go to my slot two click on that and press assign. So I'm assigning those faces to slot two. And I'll increase the roughness for that. And now we've got a different texture for those. Looking good, lovely stuff. Okay, does it wanna be red like that? Probably, I don't know. I think those are probably gonna have the same texture as the slot two texture, which I didn't label actually. Um, so if I click on my strap, down arrow here, I've still got that material available. It might be in slot two in that other one, but it's still a new material that I can use. So I can use that up there as well. And I'm actually gonna call this strap red color. Yep, strap red. Uh, and I can then select this one, select this one last. What do I press to link the materials? What do I press to link the materials? And whilst I'm waiting for those responses, maybe for equal width straps, one would have to make the strap from the curve and bevel the geometry. Yes, that's a good idea actually. Uh, flat profile curve, that's different. Yeah, I think that works actually. Thank you so much, Surrealism. Uh, that's right, what I was looking for. Slots will save my life, love it. Um, Control L, you were there first, Corey. Yes, you win the golden cube. <laughs> the Gabbit golden cube. Okay, Control L, so materials, and I can link my materials up. Okay, now with the blade, uh, we wanna go a step further with the blade because, well, not a step further, we want to do something else with the blade. Uh, we're going to give it a base material. So one, we'll go uh, a blade uh, mid. I'm going to call it blade mid. Okay, so middle blade. It makes sense a second. And I'm going to go for a sort of grey colour. I'm going to make it slightly metallic. Not too metallic uh, because it's low poly and it just gets a bit sort of, I don't know, it gets a bit too chunky. So obviously, you, usually you have zero or one for this. Okay, but when you're doing low poly, it's a bit stylized. So I go a little bit metal. 
and it sort of makes more sense. Trust me, it makes more sense. <laughs> Trust the gabbit. Um, now just seeing what people are saying. What's the defin de definition of a poll? Someone answer that, please. What's the definition of a poll? And you get uh, brownie points for answering that one. Uh, okay, so um, then I want the end of this. Um, three, the end faces here, here, and probably in here, but we'll come back to that in a second, but here. And that's gonna have a slightly lighter color so it looks like it's going sharp, okay? So we need a new slot, so uh, new, new slot is there, slot two. And I'm gonna call this, uh, what did I call the last one? Oh, well, I'm gonna call it metal uh, shiny, metal light. And it's gonna have a lighter base color and it's still gonna be metal. And when I assign this to those selected faces, so under slot two, assign, uh, we've now got a sort of shiny blade at the end. It's probably a little bit too bright, so I'll just bring it down a touch. And there we go, look into that. Now what you can, you can go a little, a touch further with this, right? At the top, that would catch the light, so we can actually make that whole top shiny. So I can select these, go to slot two, and assign them to metal light, okay? So that, it sort of gives it a, a natural shading. At the back here as well, probably these ones. And uh, slot two, assign but actually underneath why not then select these faces here oh i'm trying to select these back faces but it's a mirror select 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 these faces along here and i'm going to give them a dark color so i'm going to create another slot so uh, a new slot uh, new and we're going to call this uh, metal dark and bring it right down so it's very dark but still give it a metallic and then under slots, I'm going to assign it to these faces. And then we've got a natural shading, you see? Na I call it a natural shade, there's nothing natural about it. <laughs> Red Dragons, thanks, keep up the great work, love it. Make wood texture. I mean, we could make a wood texture, but um, uh, we need to sort of get on with some texture painting and all that, and we're almost out of time. Um, so we've sort of made a fairly cool looking axe there, really, haven't we? Just a bit of adjustment, I reckon, to slot one, which is the... Um, the uh, brown it's tricky isn't it how brown do you make it i mean it's yeah golden brown dark brown gray brown greeny brown light brown it all depends on what's it, what it's going to be used for doesn't it but yeah <laughs> don't spam no spamming the mods were on you <laughs> is there an archive for previous streams yes so i've got playlists for live streams uh, and playlists for making game objects uh, uh, yeah, check out the playlist on my channel and you'll find lots of cool stuff. Uh, loads of cool stuff on there, I'll tell you. Amazing stuff. Let's have a look at how you're getting on. Okay, let's uh, scroll up to where we're at. Okay. Yes, there we go. You see, that's what I was trying to get at. That's what I was trying to get at. <laughs> I really could not explain it. But now you've got quads going all the way through and you've got a poll in the middle here. Did anybody answer my poll question, actually? Yeah, there we go. Corias has indeed. Uh, so uh, three or five plus edges going into it so you've got three going into this one but you've got four going into this one so that's not a pole but this is a pole these are poles as well so you've got poles on the edges here that's the only issue with this i'd actually bring down from there so you wouldn't have poles on the edge of your object so it can be a bit you get pinching on at the edge of your object so come from, down from this one instead of this edge here have an edge going down there and then you can actually curve this as well then can't you oh grant you're a genius you're a pole master topology master <laughs> um, will you download as a vid to your channel yes I will yep pole could be wooden <laughs> yep uh, <laughs> uh, where are we is there oh uh, yeah we said that um, I heard you were playing chess with CG Matter who won well who do you think I, I've played chess quite a lot um, I'm not great at it but I do play a lot uh, so um, yeah I, I, I did I did win I did win this time but he's he's been been practicing since I think. Uh, is how I'm doing leather strap. Oh, this is how you're doing in the leather strap, is it? Screw modifier, shrink wrap, and solidify. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So you've got a screw modifier, goes around the pole. Oh, and a subdivision surface modifier. Cool. Like that. That's a good way of showing us as well, James. And that's one of my students. He's 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 a smart cookie, isn't he? Smart cookie. <laughs> uh, okay, where are we? Um, uh, oh, um, so we've got. 
Uh, spawny, looking good, like the straps, maybe a little bit chunkier, but that's probably just me. Can you see, when you add a, a cylinder, you've got quite a lot of cuts there, so it's losing its low poly feel for me. Maybe join some of the points together to make it a bit more jaggedy. Uh, but I, I'd like it, but that's how I'd finish it off myself. Uh, looking good, you've got a lot of curvage on your, um, is curvage even a word? <laughs> um, it's roundedness on your, what's that called? Uh, blade. Uh, so try auto smooth. Uh, so you've got smooth shading and auto smooth. I'll talk about that in a second. It's beautiful. Uh, looking good, Urban Sunny Ray, like that. Oh yeah, looking good. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce your name. Get a, get a name that I can pronounce. <laughs> it's all your fault. This is quite interesting. I like that. Nice touch. Uh, Minato 200, looking good. Text order Jacob <laughs> looks awesome. That looks a really good one, doesn't it? It's a bit shiny, I find these. A, bit, a little bit shiny, but it's just me probably. Uh, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. And 10 minute challenge. Is that 10 minutes? Decent stuff, eh? Love it. Very nice. So, we, uh, who was that again? Oh, I, I'm pressing the cross. Oh, I fell for it. Didn't I? I'm pressing the cross in the corner. Uh, Shaka Dal 1. Nice work. Oh, this is getting interesting. It's getting very spiky. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a tough. Um, I suppose watch the get good at blender stuff and that'll help you with things like grooves and stuff it's really tough going to get the topology right this one looks right great den dragon very nice actually very nice indeed I like it a lot um, that's nice uh, doldrum good work uh, leather what it was a leather strap that um, James um, showed us earlier yep Okay, so uh, anything to finish off? I suppose uh, there is rendering to finish off, but hopefully you'll figure that out. There is that shade smooth thing as well. So if I right click now and shade smooth, uh, everything, oh, it's, it's just the handle gets smoothed out. But uh, if you ever come out down to here, object data properties and normals, I think it is, yep, auto smooth, it makes your edges that are less than 30 degrees or more than 30 degrees, so less than 30 degrees, uh, sharp. I can't think of them, but you just adjust it here. To, so the insides, so I'm looking at these lines here, um, which ones, so that's staying sharp. So you can adjust it and you can then get a smooth handle like that. Uh, but I quite like the low poly look myself, so I'm gonna shade flat. Because I think the chunky look is looking cool. It's quite fun, though. quite fun. Um, uh, yeah, you could um, post Sketchfab to Discord. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's good actually. If you play chess a lot, maybe you'd love to play some card games. Are you playing any video games? Uh, no, I, I don't. I, I am playing a bit. I play a bit of Divinity Two. Is it called? Is it Divinity? My brain's gone. It's, it's talking too long. Yep. So I play a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it looks like I'm playing for ages when I'm on Discord and I leave it on because I just leave it on in the background and then play five minutes and then go and do something else. Uh, so it looks like I've got it going for ages, but play a little bit here and there. Uh, ambient occlusion baking real quick. Uh, baking and quick do not go together, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, I, oh, it's, it's a long one. I'll quickly show you how to turn ambient occlusion on uh, because that's that will help us a little bit here. Uh, so um, no ambient occlusion, ambient occlusion, but ambient occlusion baking is that'll take me ages. Divinity Original Sin too, that's the one. Is it? Well, I couldn't get it in my head. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it would take a bit too long, and it, we're so, kind of at the end of the stream now. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Combi Chan. Uh, yeah, uh, but I, I do have a baking series. The thing is, with ambient occlusion, it's actually quite awkward to get a good bake from it. I find um, I find the cavity bake is better. So maybe look at that, but. Um, but yeah, um, look at my baking series and I go through most of those sort of things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I think we're there uh, with the axe now. I mean, there's the ambient occlusion. Oh, also you might want screen space reflections on, then you get a bit of reflection off your stuff on other objects and turn half race, uh, trace res off. Uh, you probably also want a light in there. I've got a light in my scene, but it's miles away, as you can see, it's all the way up there. So I'll bring that a bit closer. And, oh, of course, we have to go to the actual light there. Oh, that's really bright. Because our object's small, that's a thousand watt light and it's really close, so. But it's, that's why it's good to have things real size because then your lights will actually work as real light. So a hundred watt light is really bright. So what I'll do is I'll just open this one up and change it to the 3D viewport 
and then I can see some lights and I can go uh, shift D to create another one over here and shift D for a backlight change the backlight to a blue always I like a blue backlight and then up the that is at the back isn't it I'm assuming that oh yeah it is there we go uh, so can you see that sort of acts as a rim light you got a blue um, thing across there also contact shadows helps a bit so turn contact shadows on for all your lights give it a bit more shading and this one I'm going to change to a red I'm just going off on one sort of a yellowy color actually and this one to a slight red that's so that's and there's a three-point lighting setup for you ta-da it's got a really interesting back blue light I always put the black back light up a bit and then you've got this sort of interesting highlight going on it's quite fun isn't it there we go a <laughs> quick speedy three-point lighting let's have a quick another look at the discord server oh very nice <laughs> okay so yes that's what I meant because you've got the pole in the middle you could I mean if you ever needed to do anything in here you could obviously cut that up a bit more and create a sort of um, so if you didn't want a pole but there now you've got quads and a quad flow going around areas that you can add to that is better topology than we had earlier uh, hey that's nice it's cool isn't it I like the idea of copying this one it's an interesting style isn't it and it's a cool copy there tin uh, axe tree anybody that's the tree is getting its own back on the woodcutter I love it <laughs> looking good uh, this this bit along here looks a little bit strange I'm not sure that works for me but I can see it's nice that you're trying different things out um, yeah otherwise that looks really really cool doesn't it yep um, excellent stuff so let's just quickly s speedily go through so everybody can oh uh, yep that's a nice one uh, and see what people have done throughout today's work I like this one oh, it's, it's great stuff and that's James's strap that he was talking about with the modifiers that he used that's good that uh, looking nice and we fixed our topology eventually didn't we looks good doesn't it looks good any more questions then put them in the stream chat and I'll take a look at those in a moment ah oh, looking great aren't they let's quickly scroll down right back to the bottom again and see if anybody else <laughs> Oh, what well, the three-point lighting you mean or uh, maybe something busy occurs oh, I see for the bands yeah yeah that's what you're talking about yep cool stuff okay so any other questions you seem to look at multiple screens yeah I've got three screens going so I've got the chat over here got my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro with the reference images on today and um, the discord the actual stream is this one here <laughs> it's good fun isn't it uh, would you do a video on texturing it could do I mean okay so people want um, a bit more continuing it's this low poly at the moment but I could go into sculpting and then we could texture paint it but it becomes it sort of loses its beginner edge which is the sort of follow along and it becomes a watch grant doing stuff which um, you might want to do but uh, you might not as well <laughs> I like this I'm not sure what that is though it looks like he's uh, chopping up candy <laughs> hopefully it's not someone's head that'd be awful what is me better Maya or blender uh, may is much better yeah <laughs> um, uh, blender's better for price and uh, apart from that they're about the same I think Maya's supposed to have advantages in when it comes to animation and it's industry standard so there's that <laughs> uh, do you make real looking things yes I, I like stylized things more um, but I do make real looking things I'm going to move this across the side so people can see uh, people adding stuff there that's cool isn't it and then if I change this one to uh, there we go that then you can see that and the stream and there I'm surrounded by axes that want to chop my head off <laughs> blender is quickly making inroads isn't it just I'm starting a YouTube channel for design any suggestions uh, consistency posting regularly uh, create good content those are my suggestions <laughs> watch grant model a grocery store in a grocery store fifth anniversary GoPro challenge <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean there go Kobe chat uh, Anil Harmer Kalu did you think is your buying tablet guide still up to date I suppose it's a little bit dated now I probably need to readdress that so I'll, I'll look into it um, but the one I would recommend the most at the moment is the one by Wacom as well as the Wacom one uh, they are two different graphics cards tablets graphics cards crazily yep um, 
uh, but about texturing character for game development is it good to do a smart UV or a manual UV unwrapping manual UV will take longer but it's better uh, don't matter much what program you use apparently when I'm not sure what that means <laughs> uh, cool yeah no problem uh, be careful an unfortunate axe uh, accident may, may occur oh that's good accident oh that's good <laughs> model and rig a lava monster in 10 minutes that's quite a good one isn't it I like that he's done a good job there <laughs> um, yeah Cintiq 16 that's a good one yeah um, they're quite expensive but they're and they're not as expensive as the other ones, so yeah, it's good. Any suggestions for good lighting? Three point lighting, look that up, helps. What's that sound, Grant? Heard like cars. Yeah, there was a motorbike going past. I've got the window open for the sake of heat. <laughs> uh, make Star Wars X Force. Oh, of course, that's a, the new thing coming out, isn't it? I haven't seen any of it though. A 28 minute video. Uh, no, he does, he sort of talks around it as well. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, I think we're there. I'll just last um, last quickly go through the... Hey, that's a cool one, isn't it? Hercules... Uh, Herschel and the Art Kid, sorry. And Serge FP looking good there as well. Uh, do you freelance part-time? I used to, but I don't seem to have the time. I, I mean, I'm doing um, some freelance stuff for Atlas Empires. I don't know. I'm going to get that up, actually. Let's get that up. Uh, Atlas Empires and see if they've got any new branding up and running. Yeah, I think they have actually. Oh, actually, this is someone uh, who's talking about Atlas Empires update and gameplay. Is this recent? 15th of Feb 2018. No, that's not right. <laughs> I thought I could see my models on there, but I can't. Now let's go to images and see if. Okay, there is an image, although that. I'm trying to see if that my models are in there or not. Let me see. Nope, that's an older version. Oh, where's my models? Okay, it's really stretched that one. Ah, there we go. Okay, <laughs> I only found uh, one of my. There we go. So there's some models that I've made for Atlas Empires, uh, the game, which is being released in Canada as we speak, I think. Uh, so you can see all these sort of uh, fun little models that I had to make uh, for the game and the environment as well. Although this is an early environment, but I've made a different one since and all the wood stores and stuff. Had lots of fun doing that. Uh, I think there's some, a few other ones as well. I think that's the same image. That is the same image, isn't it? Um, yeah. Oh, and there's me doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, Atlas Empires. So that's a bit of freelancing work I did. Doing some modelling stuff. Um, also, I suppose I ought to take a moment to talk about... Uh, yeah, so what are we expecting from the course? I'm just going to change something here. Oh, why is that not working? Oh, my, my program's crashed. Ah, pure F. Uh, save and load. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is what I'm working on with the course at the moment. So uh, the course that I'm doing, that's what we're, we'll end up making. It's slightly different from this because uh, this was a practice run I was doing of the texture painting just for some fun. And I've tried to keep this as simple as possible. So if you're interested in the course, there are links in the description, a course for making characters uh, from scratch. So from completely zero to hero sort of thing. And this is sort of, it's it will be game ready. It's low poly, uh, low poly-ish anyway, game ready, low poly. Um, and I've tried to keep things as simple as possible. So all things like the sculpting and the texture painting, um, it will all be as simple as I could possibly make it for a beginner's, from a beginner's perspective. And if you uh, use the coupon in the uh, description, you can get a, uh, a discount. Uh, this sudden, uh, I think it's 12 pounds. I'm not sure how many, much it is in dollars. Like it's around it's, it's $10 area anyway. Um, and that's until the weekend, I think that's gonna work for. Uh, so uh, there's, there's only uh, part of the course released at the moment and I'm still working on the ending of it. So that's where we're up to at the moment. Well, that's where I'm up to. So there's still more of the course to come and there's hours and hours uh, in there for you. So a bit quick advert there for you. 
And uh, like I say, you don't need sculpting experience. You don't even need to use a graphics tablet for this. It does help, of course, uh, if you've got both of those, uh, but I try and break it all down so it's into its simplest form and it will be game ready. And I think we're gonna end up putting it into Unity as well. So this ogre has, I think it was around 13,000 tries. It might have been 15, but um, if I'd done a proper full retopo, which I talk about in the course, but we don't actually go through, uh, then it would be lower. Um, but um, uh, but um, yeah, uh, but um, uh, we're doing a really simple remesh to sort of show how quickly and easily you can go about making a model. So it's more, it's higher topology, higher poly than it should be, but that's still a poly count that will work in games and will work well. Uh, Grant Abbott, you're sweating a little, am I? No, just probably a bit shiny. <laughs> uh, how can I see cavity in the render? Uh, you would have to bake the cavity out. Uh, how many tries the ogre had? Oh, we've said that one. Just wanted to say thanks for the great videos. Just started getting into 3D a few weeks ago and getting incredibly frustrated. Uh, your videos made all the difference. Good to hear it, say Zale 13. How can I, oh yeah, we said that one. Um, a 10 minutes low poly challenge between Grant Abbott and <laughs> I probably just think he'd win because I don't do things that quickly really. Uh, it could be fun, couldn't it? Uh, any idea for game assets? Uh, simple, keep it simple. If you're just starting out, then we've got we've done a few of those. So look at the playlist that this video is part of, uh, sort of game assets live, uh, and uh, yeah, and we'll be any any ideas for game assets next week, guys? Any any thoughts? Um, let me know. If you do free, if you do not freelance as your main source of income, what do you do? If it's not secret, of course, um, I teach and I YouTube. YouTube is uh, overtaking my income and creating. Uh, and sort of slight advertising and sponsorship through my channel. Like um, at the moment, I'm saying game dev. I'll only um, I'll only advertise things that I think are any good. Um, other, and I've let lots of people down saying, I'm sorry, it's not something I'd use or I think my audience would be interested in. <laughs> um, and so um, I try and keep the integrity of my channel, but I make a bit of money through sponsorship. So like uh, Sketchfab, for example, which I love, um, I've advertised for them a few times and they've given me a uh, a small amount of money which is fine but because I'm happy to advertise for them. Uh, Vagon as well um, who I've talked about in the previous video they gave me some money uh, to go on my channel uh, but I, again I was quite impressed with what they had to offer so I thought yep I'll do that happily so I get a bit of money through sponsorship like that. Um, hopefully that answers your question and a bit of money through freelance uh, so yeah it's sort of all these little bits add up hopefully a bit of money from this course if anybody signs up to it this character development course. <laughs> Uh, money or pennies? <laughs> Do you mean there's in lots of money? I'm I'm rolling it, man. I'm like, but I'm lucky actually because I don't have. Uh, I suppose I got a nice house uh, and a fairly low mortgage. Just got got in luckily. You know the timing. Uh, don't have any kids, um, so it's it makes life easy. And I live very frugally. Um, I haven't updated my computer for three years, even though it's my livelihood, and I really ought to. Um, but that's sort of the person I am really. I haven't haven't really found it necessary to have um, to render 30 seconds faster or to build a high poly, um, a higher poly model, if you see what I mean. Uh, a low poly bike. Uh, interesting, low poly car. I want to see potions or creature eggs for the next game asset. That's quite a fun one, creature eggs we could do. I like the sound of that. That's more my sort of, um, because um, cars are all good and fine, but to make a low poly car look good and keep it easy, it gets quite tough. I mean, we could go for stylized cars and have a bit of fun with that, but it does get quite tough. Maybe, maybe. Uh, would people like me to see it, to see a sort of car? Uh, because, I mean, there's quite a few car tutorials out there, aren't there? But um, a stylized car I'd do because it's quite fun for me, but just modeling a car is basically I feel like you're a bit of a photocopier then because you take the reference images and you trace around them and you're just copying uh, and I don't, it doesn't feel as creative for me but maybe a stylized car could be quite fun and uh, low poly grant have it we won't be doing that someone already commented on my teeth can you imagine the the low poly version of you out here everywhere <laughs> uh, low poly scepter oh that could be could be interesting uh, also um, if you comment in the discord server um, of any ideas make a character with rigging I mean it, it it's impossible to make that 
in two hours with a follow along series I think it's possible to it's very possible to do that nice and quickly but if you want people to follow along it gets tough because in the previous live streams we have done that but it sort of ends up being two sections cyber truck low poly toilet a helmet could be good yep I like the sound of that the helmet could be a good one a low poly default cube <laughs> an obsession there low poly grab it chunky car yeah stylized car maybe I quite like the idea of doing some eggs a cactus is a good one as well isn't it what is a helmet helmet sort of protects your head helmet so sort of medieval helmets knights wear helmets and stuff low poly pistol I thought about doing that um, it gets tricky uh, but that's a thought actually maybe a, a flintlock pistol or something like that could be fun and I looked into it and I'd started doing a tutorial for it and I thought this is actually getting quite complicated so it's not as easy as it looks but maybe a low poly style we could do it uh, rigging a high poly character it's tough going rigify is the answer to be honest a cactus knight trojan helmet it's just so tough rigging isn't it <laughs> low poly imp <laughs> okay so I'll, I'll consider these ideas and come up with something for next week don't you worry uh, competition remember the competition deadline I can't remember when it is anybody remember the deadline I have to go onto discord for that um, oh I forgot to put discord up back up in the background Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I quite like it. It's good. Let's see what other people are making. It's looking good. Oh, that, that, that's crazy, isn't it? That's a nice one. Yeah, they're all working really well, aren't they? These are good. So I think we're up to here, aren't they? That's fun, isn't it? Yeah, doing really well. Uh, oh, yeah, so you've got the, the cavity is there if you need to do the cavity thing. Looking good. Looking good and last but that's the yeah nice one little chain on it and things cool oh yeah a little bit of a glow there I like this one it's good fun that's not there there we go nice very nice <laughs> oh cool yeah that was that was a good one actually it was a good challenge for us the uh, um your topology thing there uh, low poly fancy lantern alien deadline is 31st may that's good ah yeah i do remember now um yeah so if you want to join the competition then you can come to the uh, competition entries and we can see some of those already happening here i'll just i don't want to spoil it so just sort of going through that a bit and you can chat about stuff in the competition as well um yeah so competition grants challenge is there and you can enter the competition so join the discord and you're there let's go back to the live stream okay so i think that uh is uh you post constant consistently alpha cg oh yeah sorry that's how you um any other question eggs with chicken legs <laughs> cool yeah so uh, join the deadline buy my course <laughs> check out a vagum computer that, that is because there's a, a coupon in the code that i um, released um earlier today uh, it's worth checking out at least even if you have no no expectations just give it a try see see i find it and uh yeah maybe even try out some of the game dev tv tutorials uh, um, stuff as well that's in the link um yeah uh, have a look uh, thanks for watching thanks for those that donated as well much appreciated uh, milan and others actually i should, should remember um, dan as well and uh edwin seaman zeman and i think that's right anyway oh and game over that's right hang on why is that not refreshing that's that's re previous isn't it oh that's annoying my feeds aren't working oh they were previous so thank you to those for the previous stream but there was others today so i'm sorry if i've missed you out uh, but thank you very much for that uh, anyway yep so uh, the next stream uh, Friday same time three o'clock BST uh, two o'clock GMT <laughs> so same time basically and uh, if you've got any ideas for the next stream then make sure you put it on the live stream channel uh, and I'll come <laughs> I'll see what, uh, and I'll, I'll I'll take a look yep some good work from you guys today well done and uh, yeah happy blending as always and I will see you next time